Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to podcast you twice and then linger a long time on the second podcast. Is boob graze? No, that's no, the kiss. The kiss. Oh, that's the kiss. They do the same joke with him twice. Oh. I know that quote sucks, but every other quote on this page is one of Kate Winslet's three page monologues. Uh, right, 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 right. Just uh, her being like, I'm the most miserable person alive. Right. I'm a pathetic worm like that. Like also, just, or or an Arthur line where he's like, back in my day, <laughs> movies were black and white. Now they're color. <laughs> All his They don't make pictures like they used to. For yes. his computers. Every movie's got a computer in it now. Back then pictures used to star Claudette Colbert. <laughs> now Claudette Colbert She's is deceased. dead. <laughs> oh wow, you know this guy's a veteran because of these deep insights. Back then a movie used to make a million dollars. Now it makes a hundred million dollars. It's almost like inflation has happened in the century that I've been alive. Century that this movie's been running. Back then, a picture used to be the Lumiere brothers setting up a camera, filming people leaving the factory. Now a picture is the holiday? Oh, great, great. Back then, a movie used to be a book. It had pages and writing in it because cameras didn't exist. Oh, oh my God. Now movie star Jack Black? <laughs> Now more than ever. Now more than ever. Back then, movies didn't have clocks in their walls. <laughs> <laughs> A the, house, the clock would be outside of the wall. Mounted, perhaps. The clock was on the wall. <laughs> not in the wall. Back then, the world didn't have enough heroes. Now the world has had enough heroes. Superheroes. Venom in theaters this October. <laughs> what if that, if like Cameron meets him in a post credit scene and she's like, you should do trailer VO <laughs> for me, right? Like, in a world. <laughs> Back oh, in my, my day, God. the world did not people. It had dinosaurs. <laughs> do you know that Eli Wallach lived an additional eight years Correct. after this movie? Do you want to hear something insane? Yeah. The way I first knew of Eli Wallach and my uh, frame of reference for him is that he performed at my uh, day camp okay. when I was nine. Camp doc. Was uh, he like testing this character? <laughs> <laughs> Did he give a keynote address about how he fucking went to school with Jesus or whatever? He right. I am realizing his character is just uh, Alan Schirmer from Wet Hot American Summer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right. But secondly, um, this was this was like a day camp I went. I know people hate when I talk about summer camp on the show, but this is a different camp. Right. This was a day camp I went to, like, Precious the, Children Day Camp or whatever it was called. It was called Professor X's. <laughs> Professor X's. Camp oh yeah, for sure. very special, very big boys. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but they would always like after lunch, we'd have to go to like a performance that was usually super fucking boring. Uh -huh. And he, some guy would get up and he'd be like, I was fifth string cellist in the Philadelphia harmonic <laughs> in 1974. And then he would just play the cello. Right. Okay. And the only one that was ever good was Eli Wallach and his wife came and performed. Oh, nice. And I said to my mom, like, oh, what do the they do? Like. Waiting for Godot? They, like, or like talked about the craft of acting, sure. and they did a bunch of scenes. I forget, like, what they were, but I remember being, like, a fucking laugh riot. And I said to my mom, like, they finally had a good performance today. And she was like, who was it? I was like, was some old guy named Eli Wallach. And she was like, screen legend Eli the Wallach ugly himself? is touring summer camps? And it was just like, I love acting so much, I want to share it with the children. Uh, and Ann Jackson, that's yes, his wife. Yes, him and his wife just They would, died like the same year. They're yeah, like one of those couples that were married for a gazillion played. years. It was right. like lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like this was the beginning of a couple attempts of people trying to get Eli Wallach a legacy Oscar and all of them were bad. Uh, what's the other one? He, yeah, he did get, uh, I think he got a legacy Emmy. He got an honorary lifetime, I believe, right before he died. Um, but I think everyone was looking for the career achievement, did. best he supporting did. actor nod, because he's never gotten it. Never gotten Should've an Oscar nomination. Yeah, Should have only... been this. I think this was clearly written to be, like, in Nancy's mind, an Oscar for him. Sure. Uh, Wall Street Money Never Sleeps, I think, was Oliver Stone sort of trying to do the same thing. He's got, like, a big scene in that. Yeah, I mean, and he pops up 
he popped up and yeah, he's in the ghost writer. He plays old man. Um, he pops up in, um, studio 60 on the sunset strip. Oh, Jesus uh, Christ. Playing he's... like almost the exact same character, except this character was like on the blacklist. And he's the character they parody on 30 Rock. Yes. yes. The Tim Conway, right? He's like, yeah. back in my day, you know, the ladies used to whatever. He's yeah. like, that was racist, the sandwich sexist. girl. We right. called her that because two men would stand right. on either. Right. 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 That's um, Eli Wallach, also on Wikipedia, uh, Mr. Freeze actor, preceded by Otto Preminger, yeah. succeeded by Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is one of three freezes. Yeah. There were three freezes on the Batman TV show because the first one was George Saunders. Yes, correct. And then it was Otto, Otto Preminger, Preminger and yeah. then Eli Wallach. Yep. Uh, anyway, of course, this is a podcast about Eli Wallach. The Wallcast. Yes. The house with a clock and its Wallach. Uh, oh. Yeah. Thank you. Wal- walking the walk. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, I, I jest, of course. This is Blank Check with Griffin and David. Yes. I'm Griffin Newman. David Sims. We're a hashtag the two friends. It's a competitive advantage. Uh, we're going to tour summer camps doing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a podcast about filmography. I'll do it if there's money in it. I know. <laughs> do you know. Do you know that David is has become a money monster? <laughs> he has become the titular character of Jodie Foster's. <laughs> Uh, is it Jodie Foster who made that? 2016 movie Money Monster. Wow, I've erased that movie. Yeah. I saw From that my film memory. in the theater and reviewed it. Who was? Uh, well, George Clooney was the Money Monster. Wow. Uh, Jack O'Connell the was the, the, the hostage, took took the Money yeah. Monster hostage. And Julia Roberts so was in the he's the real room. monster. Well, I think uh, society is the real monster in that one. I don't want to say his name because I don't want to make this a legal thing. Oh, but my boy. friend literally fucking wrote Money Monster and in film school, except it was the Howard Stern show instead of instead uh, of like uh, uh, Jim Cramer, right? Yeah. Mad Money, yeah. And uh, like a year later, his screenwriting teacher sold wow. Money Monster. Uh, okay, let's make sure we can say that on this. Uh, but yeah, okay, I think I, you were look, vague I enough. Didn't name yeah. people, <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, there's only three credited writers of Money Monster. <laughs> okay, uh, but yes, okay, cool. Uh, so fuck that movie. Anyway, sure. this is a I podcast it, about filmographies, directors who have massive success early on in their career and are given a series of blank checks to make whatever crazy passion project they want. And sometimes those checks clear, and sometimes they exchange houses, baby. Uh, yeah. This is a mini series on the films of Nancy Myers. It's called Something's Podcast. Mm-hmm. And today we're talking The Holiday. Yeah. Now, here's a story about our guest today, who's spoken on mic because she's good. Yep. Um, but who did not have to be flown in from a different city anymore. Well, that's a big point, because okay. last time she well, had I was to relocated. be flown in with Ansel yeah, Elgort, right. and it cost us a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think she knows the story. We, uh, maybe a month or two after the last time she was on the show for our Aliens episode, yep. went in for a very big business meeting where we were trying to sell the podcast. Okay. And uh, the person we were meeting with was looking at all of our data, mm-hmm. and he said, whoever you had on the Aliens episode, you should have that person on every week because of how big our number spike was. And we're such good businessmen that it took us two and a half years <laughs> To have her on again. Yeah. Do you remember that he said, like, they, you gotta yes. have her on right. again? You guys right, love right, money. Right. We love money. Yeah. David's mm-hmm. a money monster. Uh, a monster. Uh, recent uh, uh, East Coast. Well, you already were on the East Coast. Yeah. No. But tri state area. She wasn't. No, I, this is she was in the Midwest. Middle. Oh, correct. Born and raised, yeah. yeah. Correct. All right. Fran New Hoffner's in town. Here. The point is, Fran Hoffner's in town. Thank you. Yes. I got relocated here now by the podcast, and I'm here forever. Right. Um, we, yeah, you're we in blank, you're a, in the blank check mansion. Transfer. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and you just in the sit, dorms. You just, yeah. Yeah. You just cool your he- your heels there until we need you. And Let's talk holiday. Cameron Diaz else. is living in your apartment in Chicago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. And she can't believe just... how rustic things are. <laughs> oh wow. no, the tub. It's small. <laughs> everything is <laughs> everything is made of stone. She falls in love with my neighbor who said I had a nice haircut once. Uh, it's all good. Well, it's but not your brother. I guess your brother is elsewhere. Oh uh, no, he's in Chicago now. Uh-oh. Well, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> tell, him, tell him to look out for Cameron. She's on the prowl. I will. Um, this movie is weird because it's the one Nancy movie that doesn't feel like a blank check. It feels like her trying to make a down the line. Like this feels less personal than all her other movies. And I, when I say personal, I don't mean autobiographical. Yes and no. All the other Nancy movies feel like her grappling with like. 
this a is, notion what and you're idea. saying is this is the one movie without a middle-aged character in it everyone in it is either like you know in their 30s or 1000 years old no that's, that's one element but the other thing is the bigger thing for me is this is the only one post what women want which she doesn't write that's really based on like a, a sort of high concept gimmick yeah. Like yeah. it's mostly about this one has a gimmick. the right. device of the movie yeah. than it is then, about the character dynamic. Yeah. It's also, and we will talk about this, her trying out four actors that I, all of them, it feels like she's like trying them out. Yes. You know, like, ooh, maybe they'd be a fun right. person to put in a movie. But I feel like all other Nancy movies uh, feel like they stem from here's an interesting idea for a relationship or a dynamic. Like it's character first. Sure. And this and movie feels this like it starts first. with a what if two people swap lives? The intern's kind of high concept, too, though, because, like, interns are usually young, not old. Agreed, but then you see the movie, and it's actually just about that dynamic that uh, she clearly wants I, to write. Interns are usually in their I 20s. I know. Not in their, I forget how old he is, 70s? How old is he in the movie? Yeah. He's starting over, though. Um, um, I guess you're right. I, this, this is a blank check. There's also another big high concept hook to this movie which is what if for two hours and 15 minutes i gave audiences across the world a brief glimpse into the eye of satan (laughs) you stare directly in the eye so we brought fran on board because fran like many people yeah is a fan of the film the holiday i feel like its reputation 2006 american romantic grown exponentially in like the last five years because this movie was her like least successful at the time of its release it didn't do great it, it was gross. super expensive. It was incredibly expensive. It did fine worldwide, uh-huh. so I think it, it it you know I don't think anyone was really sweating. But yes, it does not do as well as the movies around it. Something's got to give it. It's complicated. Right. I think this was kind of viewed as a skimmer, and then the last couple of years, I feel like people stand for it so fucking hard. Well, I also feel like Love Actually sort of dipped. Yeah, in public reputation, yes, maybe this is it sort is of awful. Right. Unlike this movie, which is perfect. Love Actually is worse than The Holiday. I'm here yeah. to say no that. question. I hate yeah. Love Actually. Yes. Love Actually is, yeah. But I think like an, a yeah. bath of acid. Everyone turned on Love Actually, and then I was like, well, what do we have that still You're has right. British people and is quietly about Christmas? I think it's also just that as newer people enter the zeitgeist, or, you know, people who maybe saw this movie when they were teenagers mm-hmm. or whatever are now like old enough because time marches on don't as it, Eli man. Wallach can tell us yeah uh and so they're like <laughs> the holiday I, I've liked that movie since I was like 10 years old like I love the holiday the holiday yeah. is great it's been in rotation on cable or what you know like it's just sort of in there now back in my day the year was 1945 now the year is 2005 <laughs> I couldn't not make that joke. I know you kept on talking and I was just waiting for the opening because I could not make that joke. I'm, I'm fine with you making an unlimited amount of that joke this, this today. <laughs> that That's is fine. as deep as his perception on how things have he changed. He gives those. a fucking the keynote year is different address than it used to be. about that how is, the past was better. Right. Yeah, exactly. We're like opening weekends in my day. Opening year was the metric. But, but Fran, I, I have to disagree with you here. I don't think he ever argues that the past was better. I think he just continually argues that it was Points different. It was different. But. He never makes judgments. He never explains why one was better than the other. She does ask if it was as good or like, was it really all that it lived up to? And he goes, it was, it was better. better. But, but in relation to her notion of it, not sure, relation yeah. to the past. Mm-hmm. Back in my day, you'd have one movie every seven months. Now it's seven movies every one month. I don't, go fuck yourself. He doesn't really have a complaint. And it's not like he's saying, like, why don't I get work anymore? He knows that he's 90. Like, he's not, yes. like, trying to sell a script. No, and he doesn't <laughs> like, want to do not, like, He doesn't remember her. where he lives. He hates writing. He doesn't want to get a okay, lifetime but achievement this is award. Where, all right. When we meet him, he doesn't, like, he barely knows who he is. He's, like, ripped torn, like, then, accidentally <laughs> robbing a bank. Right. After that. He's basically fine. He, he has trouble with stairs. That's about it. Right. Like, apart from that, he's basically compost meds. Right. He can tell you all the things about how it was. And Well, it's the social interaction sure. with Kate Winslet's character, Iris, that really brings him back to <laughs> life. Everything checks the hell out in the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it is. You're introducing him on the side of the road, and you're like, oh, this fuck. This is some David Fincher. Every yeah. knot is tied. <laughs> yes. Um, it is meticulously plotted film when you're introduced to him and he's like a man who doesn't remember where he lives on the side of the highway or whatever you're just like oh fuck is this movie gonna have a dementia subplot with a man who barely knows his own name and then she's like do you know where you live 
And he's like, no, do you? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, that makes one of us. And then from then on, he just speaks in funny little musings. And he's totally coherent and remembers the past vividly. <laughs> A little too vividly. Too yes. vividly. He's got no take on it. Hey, old people can have flare-ups and get confused. That's true. It's sort of like uh, The Visit. It's Maybe he was like sundowning. A... Yeah. Yeah. In The I, Visit. I uh, wish there yeah. was a scene where Eli Wallach rubbed his diaper in <laughs> Kate Winslet's face in this movie. Remember The Visit? Yeah. We gotta watch that again. Yeah, we do. Let's just go back. Let's take another Did visit. I tell you the crazy thing that's come up recently? That uh, uh, Romilly, my, my sister, sure. uh, who is a young person, Sure. Was well, like, <laughs> on paper, she is. I don't know. In terms of the year she's been alive. Yeah, exactly. Right. According to science, she's a young person. <laughs> right. But most pointedly was less than a year old when The Sixth Sense came out. Has never heard of The Sixth Sense and thus has not had the twist ending ruined for her and doesn't know it has a twist ending. She doesn't wow. even know that it has a twist ending. Like She that- was talking about Hereditary and I was like, yeah, it's like another great. Tony Collette struggles with her family in ghost movies. Sure, right. And she's like, what's the other one? I was like, Sixth Sense. And she's like, what's the Sixth Sense? That's cool. And I was like, no one's told you the ending of the Sixth Sense? And she's like, why? Does something happen at the ending? And I'm so excited to fucking watch the Sixth Sense with her. Apparently the one person alive who hasn't caught all the jokes about the Sixth Sense. Uh, good for she's her. She's always cooking. She's always cooking. Um, it's my impression. <laughs> yeah, it's a great impression. <laughs> Ding dong. Uh, can you get the door, Griffin? Uh, do you hear something off in the distance? Getting closer. Let me open the door. Oh my God! Do you know Ben? Do you see who it is? N- no. Hello, White Nick Fury. <laughs> Hi, White Nick Fury. No judgment. I'm just saying I am that canon the marvel 616 comic oh, version yeah. of nick fury well f- welcome to the studio you know ben there was an idea uh-huh to put together a team of extraordinary people Sh- sure okay for the greatest ad read of all time okay and and so you're here zip recruiter sponsoring this episode are they not yeah they are well when you want to put together a team uh-huh I, okay i see where we're going of okay. extraordinary people sure like I, White Nick Fury, want to do for Ad Read Infinity War. Well, great. Hey. Dun na dun na dun na 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 Okay. You thought I was dead here in the corner. Oh, God. Al Pacino. Detective Will Dormer. Or, yeah, Will Dormer. Sleeping on a pile of garbage. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're here all the time. I keep telling you to leave the studio. Hello. Hi. Perhaps you remember me. Rich Uncle Moneybags. People call me Pennybags. Uh, I have a stinky butt. Okay, yes. Out sure. Out of the way, out of the way. Perhaps you remember me. No. Uh, Christopher Plummer, I've replaced Rich Uncle Moneybags. <sighs> yes. With his stinky... <laughs> Hello, I am Robert Cop, good friend of Griffin, canonically. Shh, Ben. What? We have to be quiet. Do you see who just invaded the studio? Yes. It's a Snorlax. Oh, okay, right. He's so he's so tired, Ben. Okay, I'll make this. I'll make. Hello. Oh, okay. It's me, Flat Stanley. <laughs> Everyone remembers me, a popular character. Uh. Hello. Okay. It's me, the ghost of Shirley a Child. Oh my God! All right. Well, listen. Ding Thank dong, you. Ding uh, dong. Yeah, okay. Hello, I am a uh, sandwich applying for a job. Hey, sandwich. Well, you're in the right place. Yeah. Master Frodo. <sighs> Sam, what, what's, what's, what's going on? I want to introduce you to my friend, a sexy cartoon Robin Hood fox. <sighs> you are sexy, yes. Ooh, I'm the Trix Rabbit. Okay, great. Here are six other we serial don't have characters. Enough. I'm not going to have time. There's not enough room in the studio for Suffering this. Suffering Thuckatash. All the Looney Tunes are here. And me, Nemo. It's me, Albert Brooks. Okay, everyone. Uh, hey, it's a me, a Mario. Don't touch that. Hey, don't touch that, hey, Luigi. It's me, Luigi. All right. Perhaps you remember me? The wet transfer? Oh, my God. All Your right. arch nemesis? All right, I'm just going to start. Oh, no, ad. it's a trap. No, I'm just going to start. I am Roller X Bar. It's a trap. Listen, 
Well, hey, hey, I am Mercure Poirot, perhaps the greatest ad reader of all time. Uh, all right. Yeah. Hi. And it's me, Jack Nicholson, baby. Oh my God! Ready to rub another man's rhubarb. Hey, hey, Ben. Yes. Yeah. It's me, Jackson May. I just want to do another ad read. Well, could I do the first one before ben, we do? It's yeah. Me, Sam Elliott. Jackson Maine's older brother. Sure. Just want to do another ad read. <laughs> ben. ben, look who it is. It's the kid from Wide Awake. Um, yeah. And so what? what oh, my God. What's They're this thing all again? here in the studio. Oh, right. He's sleepy. Oh, my God. But it's wide awake. Yeah. Who's this man with his soaking wet bed sheets? He looks like he just came from a brook. Oh, I know that guy. It's Brooke who sells linens by his by the brook. Hey Brooke, how you doing? Uh good. Well, Griffin, we've assembled the greatest ad read team of all time. Wow, you certainly have White Nick Fury. What should we do now? <laughs> I don't know. You want to just read the ad copy? I mean, it's your show. Okay. Yeah, um, well, you know, Ben, there are job sites that send you tons of the wrong resumes to sort through, and that's not smart. But you know what is smart? Going to ZipRecruiter.com slash blank to hire the right person. Because ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you, okay? It finds them for you. It's a powerful matching technology, scans thousands of resumes, identifies people with the right skills, education, and experience for your job, and actively invites them to apply so you get qualified candidates fast. That's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. This rating comes from hiring sites on Trustpilot with over 1,000 resumes. And right now, my listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address. Ready for it? ZipRecruiter.com slash blank. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash blank. ZipRecruiter.com slash blank. ZipRecruiter. It's the smartest way to hire. All right. Wow, Griffin, that was a great ad read. Yeah, can you get everyone out of the studio now? It's very crowded in here now. Yeah, I mean, how? Okay. Hey! Who ooh, took, ooh, tricks are for kids! Who took my red man? What's that box doing in the corner? Ding, 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 ding. They left their cereal box here. All right, can we get back to the episode? Yeah, please, yeah. This uh, movie, uh, I, I feel like the the moment where I realized, and we talked about this a little bit in the Someone's Gotta Give thing, but there was like a thing last fall where there was like a big Twitter game of everyone recasting their holiday remake. There was? Yeah, where it oh, was like this. pick four actors who you would put in the holiday and come up with like two weird mismatched couples. And I was just like, do that many people like the holiday? And is it just the notion that you have two pairings? Like what's yeah, the thing that people I don't think they're that mismatched onto? either. Yeah. Right. Like that's not the premise. No. I don't I I this missed me completely. I sort of came back into the holiday I feel like in like 2015 2016. So about the 10th anniversary. Yeah. Which, well, it was a big college favorite of ours too, but I saw it in theaters also. Okay, you saw it in theaters. I saw it in theaters at the Randhurst AMC. Hell's yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you see it in theaters, David? I saw it at, uh, in theaters in Newcastle, uh, where I went to college, uh, at the Newcastle uh, Odeon or whatever the fuck it was called by that point. Because Britain had like, Od- all right, chill out. No, I got no complaints. David was on a holiday. <laughs> the, How so, apropos, he took a holiday to another country so where he didn't live. The Odeon in, in Britain is the major theater chain, the sort of AMC or whatever. Uh-huh. And they got so big that Britain literally invoked the Monopoly law and it like said to Odeon, like, you need to give like 15 multiplexes to a new company. Wow. Like, so like suddenly the Newcastle being one of them, they just turned into something called Empire, which is like, it was literally like same employees, same thing, but they were just like, we're a new company so now. So they just like, started a second company. because yes, they were just like, there's too many Odeons, you own like 60% or 70% of the theater market, like unacceptable, like this percent has to be given away. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Imagine that happening here. And on a vacation nonetheless, I mean, that's so <laughs> stressful for you to have to deal with I saw with this that. movie on a date. I was super pumped okay. for it because- Fucking humble, Frank. Because I was like really into Nancy Myers. I really uh-huh. loved Something's Gotta Give, as we discussed. Yeah. And I was like, I guess I think I was just in on like uh Jude Law. I was I was kind of in on the sort of Jack Black leading man experiment. Is this movie 05 or 06? 06. 06. Okay. So Jack Black Christmas 06. is post King Kong. 
Sure, but oh. uh, more, more importantly, post School of Rock. But yes, well, no, I I think because School of Rock is the first proper like yes. Jack Black totally works as a leading man movie, right? Right. But right, King right. Kong, I look at as when they were like, let's see what else he can do. Like, can you put him outside of a Jack Black movie and make it work? Mm -hmm. That's why I bring up King Kong. Yeah, King Kong had happened, and I was mixed on King Kong, but it certainly hadn't turned me off of Jack Black, necessarily. Yeah, I I was still like, you know, I I liked Jack Black. Yeah. You know, I guess I'd seen High Fidelity when I was, you know, whatever age I was, 14. Yeah. And, like, I, you know, I was like, I'm on the ground floor with this guy. Like, I want him to do well. That is one of the most incredible, like, Star is Born performances ever because he literally, like, slams open the doors of the right. movie and you go like, it's oh, just, this guy's a movie star now. Right. You're like, oh, look at this guy. What's he doing? Right. This but, dude who was and on then when it cuts four away from Mr. Him, Show like, sketches. What's Jack Black up to? Right. right. Yeah. You know. Um, right. So I was, like, pumped for the movie. I saw it and I literally just, like, was like this is the worst longest fucking piece of shit. I yeah. was so mad. I went like we had dinner afterwards, and I was like, God, that was terrible. I don't think she liked it. Like it was like neither of us were that into it, and so I was like soured on Nancy for a mm-hmm. little while. I was so mad at her for this movie. Yeah, my mom loves this movie, watches it all the time, and r- routinely chides me for not being into it. What I'll say about the runtime is that it's I- very long. I went to go see it at the Ranters AMC with my friend John. Right, non-date. Um, but Humble my brag. parents, <laughs> my parents were like, how long is the movie? I was like, I don't know. It's a rom-com. It's probably 90 minutes. Yeah. And then I just sort of like went fully off the grid for two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. And I got grounded because I misrepresented how long the movie was to my right. parents. I, I had one of those as well. I feel like for movie kids, uh, especially in that era, it was like a real risk to be like, well, of course I'm going to turn off my phone. I'm a considerate yeah. movie goer, but also I'm 14. If my parents can't reach me for three hours, I might get grounded. Yeah. Right. You know, when I'd go mm-hmm. to see like the new world or whatever. Um, uh, I saw this movie in theaters. It is the only Nancy Myers movie I saw in theaters. Weirdly, I've seen all of her other movies on home video. Um, but uh, it is one of the only movies I ever walked out of. Sure. And I, I will knew, say. I knew this. God. I knew this. I walked out because the group I was with was like, fuck this movie. Sure, sure. You, I, did, you I, didn't start the walk out. I don't think I've ever walked out of a movie of my own volition. The only movie I tried to walk out of was Pearl Harbor when I was 15, mm-hmm. where I realized that the film was like, there was like two hours left of the film. And right. I felt like I'd been in there for a million years. And I turned to my friend and said, like, let's just go. And he was like, they haven't even blown up Pearl Harbor yet. And I was like, fine. Like, I was yes. just like, he was like, I at least I'm here to see death and destruction, if nothing else. So go on. No, I, I walked out of it. I didn't protest, but I wouldn't have walked out of it on my own volition. I remember the night vividly because after we walked out, my friends took a bunch of photos. And I was like, that was the best I ever looked. Like, still on Facebook when I look at the photos of me outside the Lincoln Square like, Theater. What a yeah, I'm like, that was my peak, and I didn't even realize it. Wow. Walking out of the holiday was the coolest I will ever be. Right. Um, but uh, then I saw the second half of it on a plane like six months later. I was like, I guess I should watch the second half of it. And was like, yep, don't like it. Sure. But the thing that was very uh, uh, noteworthy to me, especially since I saw the, the hours separately, is my big into the movie was like, okay, I don't really like Nancy Myers movies. I don't have that much interest in watching a Cameron Diaz, Jude Law rom-com. I like both of them. Certainly at this time, I like both of them a lot. But I'm like, that looks really generic. The Kate Winslow, Jack Black pairing is interesting. These are both people who don't do movies like oh, this. Oh, you mean on paper. Yeah. Right. I was like, Kate Winslet as an actress doesn't tend to do big movie star she roles. She had eschewed. Now, it wasn't just the Post-Titanic. She, she, she like had essentially said, I will not do those kinds of movies. Right. Like, and I, I'm not at interested. At this point, was hardcore Kate Winslet fanatic. Like, she was my favorite living actress. Yeah, because... She was my favorite living actress. And Eternal Sunshine, time? I'm assuming. Was no, but the, the I was like so in on Little Children. I was like so in on all of them. Well, Little Children comes out right at the same time. Very, very close to this movie. October yeah. to this movie is, I think, December. So that was fresh in your mind. I loved her in like everything from like 2002 till she wins the Oscar. And the reader was like the first performance of hers I didn't like. Well, I'm, I'm all right. I'm going to run that down for you. The yeah. run you just because okay. it goes like this. The Life of David Gale, which she is abominable. You're right. I haven't seen that movie. Uh, Eternal Sunshine, which she's great. At. Right. Finding Neverland. I mean, at the time, I thought that was a great performance. A lot. Right. Yeah. I, I don't remember. Nice Andrew. movie that yeah. I remember. Not I was so sold on her at the time. I was like, God, she can do no wrong. That movie is creepy. Uh, Romance and Cigarettes, the John Turturro which like, musical. I've never seen that. I one. think she's good in that one. All the King's Men. Another. Never seen but my seen favorite Horrible book of all movie. time. Yeah. I refuse really? to watch it. It's yeah, a great book. I love yeah. that book. Uh, the original movie is 
fine. Like, yeah. just watch that. Uh, little children, right? Which I love. Flushed away. She's good in that. <laughs> I mean, she's she's good. It's David. A, you have to be film. David. You have to be fair. She's good in that. She plays a uh, a rat named Rita who lives underneath a toilet. And the holiday in which she plays her second Iris because she had already right. played Iris in right. the film Iris. Right. Oh, she, and she's course. great in that. Mm-hmm. She is good in that. At this point, she has gotten like five Oscar nominations, and she's just turned like thirty, thirty-one. Did she get nominated for Little Children? She did. Okay. Sense, Sense and Sensibility, Titanic. Iris, Titanic, Eternal Sunshine, Iris, Little Children, Eternal Sunshine, Little Children. She didn't get a Finding Neverland nom. No, she did. She? I mean, that would because that was the same year as Eternal Sunshine. They thought maybe she'll get supporting and lead, and she didn't. I mean, good. Yeah, fine. Um. Yeah. No, she had that right. That sort of run of. That I guess Amy Adams is on now. Where and like, she was like 30. Like she was, she yeah. had done it at a very young age while after being in the biggest movie of all time. That could have seemed like an overwhelming shadow over most young actors' careers. She had sort of zagged. And then the idea yeah, of she just coming did weird back shit. to a big studio movie was very exciting to me. Jack Black, I loved. I loved everyone trying to see if they could expand the Jack Black persona. The first hour of this movie, after the initial setup, has so little Kate Winslet, so little Jack Black. It's well, especially Jack Black. Right. Like Jack Black doesn't really come in in a serious way until the last 30 minutes of the movie. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To make Fettuccine. He is the fifth lead of this film. Yeah. Behind Eli Wallach. Yeah. Which sure. is really frustrating. Mm, no, I'm <laughs> less of him and the better in this movie. But, Disagree. Oh. Dis. Oh, this is going to. Uh, okay, go ahead. Three. Of Jack Black? Less of Jack Black? This is Jack Black's character. Will die on. Jack Black's character in this about? film literally makes me want to walk into the sea and he never talk to anyone ever again. Scores. <laughs> I, I think he is. What's to not understand or like? So charming in this movie. Yeah, he's so charming. I think he's his character's so horribly written. I think he's very charming in this movie. He's always oh, doing his little melodies. Absolutely. What an absolute What a classic guy. Skibbity boop boop. If someone boop, did boop, that to boop. me, I would call the police <laughs> and then possibly murder them in, in the like few minutes while I waited for the police to come. Back in my day, we didn't have ribbity doop. We only had floobity floop. I would, bop, bop. I would call the police and say, like, <laughs> I can't be held accountable for what happens next. And I would like hold the phone up to him as he was going like, like I would blank check. <laughs> Jo- Joanna was so horrified by him in this movie that I had to what? keep being like, you know, he's got such a great reputation. He's like a nice guy, like really good. Like, you know, I was he's trying to beef up. Like, yeah. He's horrible. He's this. so lovable. Okay, because I'll say he's a so majority sweet. is going to win this argument, and it's an argument. Okay. I watched this movie with my girlfriend, Humble Brag. Wow. And hey, say it again. I watched this with my girlfriend, Humble Brag. Humble Brag. I beat you. You didn't say it properly. Fuck you. I like that once I self humble brag, you ask me to do it yeah, again it's because not you, fair. it is it's fair. not fair because you've done it to me so many times. Because I've been so training my whole life to, to be able to right. do okay, it. Okay, so you watch it with your your, Good your lady. For you, Griffin. Thank you. I oh, watched. Boy. I watched it with my girlfriend out. humble brag, <laughs> and. Um, she every time he came on screen was like, I can't believe how good he is. That's oh, he's, God. he's amazing. And I, I was like, this- I agree. He's he's giving the most naturalistic <laughs> like in performance in the film. land right now. I will also say I brought this up to a crush of mine, and they were like, Oh, Jack Black movie. Yeah, that's that's the first person they went to in this for ben, the iconic romantic performance. Ben tiebreaker. It's not a tie because already David's yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, well, I but like you him can you can make it a tie. Well, I you know, could join to my side and make it two on two because you like music. Because I like music, uh-huh. and, I, and you totally like to uh, annoy women with like that. Like hey, that hey, is that that's one of your moves, fair. David? That's not fair. He also annoys Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> to make it sound like it's a gendered thing is very unfair. We're gonna get to Dustin Hoffman. And he annoys- hang out. And- Blockbusters. Yeah. <laughs> you hang out in abandoned store. That does sound like something you do. Yeah. Ben. Or you'd be like, this is super vaporwave. It's like rats crawler. Hell yeah. Ben, you checked into the, the holiday this morning, right? I sure did. Right before watching. And you you were fucking on board with this movie, right? I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong watch. with it. No, it's great. It earns its runtime. I'll tell you this. Napkin head rules. Oh, Napkin it's head so rules. so funny. Okay. And oh it is God. kind of incredible that. Uh, Jude Law didn't make JFL new faces that year. Uh, it's a good bit with with Napkin Head. Oh yeah, I mean, and he oh. didn't even new make faces Martin. or new faces characters. New faces character. Well, that was I think that's what fucked him up is yeah. that they didn't have characters at the time. Mm. And if they had characters, he would have gotten in with yeah. Napkin Head. He instead. did have a killer catchphrase though for his stand up. I am Daddy. I am Daddy. 
He's daddy. daddy. Can you imagine being daddy and then the saying I am daddy? Yeah. And then even becoming more that's daddy like, over time. Number one reason that's, that's I like want to be a relic. I was about to say that's 50% of why I'm all in on having He's kids. He's daddy. Right. Yeah. yeah. He is daddy. I'm going to try and find the, the clip. Yeah, here we He's go. so embarrassed to be daddy, but why? Why be embarrassed? Don't be embarrassed. Embrace because your daddy. He reads cookbooks at night, Fran. He sews and he has a cow. I mean, how could a man do those things? <laughs> I am daddy. Yes. I am daddy. So this movie just feels like she slam dunk went into Sony, right? And this is Columbia after she had made a bunch of money off of something's got to give at Columbia. Okay. And says like, hey, here's the pitch. Women house swap. You get four big movie stars. I'm writing it for Cameron Diaz, Jude Law, Jack Black, Kate Winslet. All four of them are interested and they gave her a green light, right? This feels like a one sentence pitch. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you say this isn't a blank check movie, but she had her biggest blank check. Like, Somebody's Gotta Give was a huge hit. Yeah. I think she was just like, I'm going to make another movie. I think it's a blank check in terms of her being able to make the movie without any interruption. It just doesn't feel well, like... for this kind of money, too. Yes. Yeah. And also to pick her cast and all that, right? And all that yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's Sorry. the big thing is that, like, she had proven so good with movie stars that Kate yeah. Winslet was like, I will finally make another big studio movie. With Nancy Myers. I'm trying to think if, yeah, I guess she had just had not, I guess none of these count as big studio movies. Yeah, no, not really. Right, I mean, like, All the King's Men, maybe. Yeah, that was a that's studio That's a supporting movie. part, though. Yeah. She's not a very yeah. large part in that movie. Uh, Jude Law's also in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, aware. He's the lead. Because that's the one where Sean Penn at the Oscars was like, one of I our just finest worked actors. with Jude Law. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's. That's uh, important context for this movie is 2004 is the year when Jude Law is in like eight movies in six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This like, is this is the tail end. It of, was October of, through of, December. He had six films, I think. That that's 04, right? That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. 05 was the year where it was like all the King's Men, which had been pushed back. No, there's nothing in 05. Yeah, 05 is cool down. Yeah. Oh, okay. So 05 was supposed to be all the King's Men. I then it gets so. pushed back to 06. So his 04 run is Huckabee's, which he's fantastic in. I Way in Fran, if you. Uh-huh. I love him in Huckabee's. You don't like. Him I think his accent's bad in it, but I think the performance is good. I, the accent works for me because that person I is like it. a robot. Sure. Uh, Alfie, which he's. I've never seen. He's charming. I, I guess so. That movie's horrible. Okay. Uh, directed by Nancy Myers' ex husband. Mm. Uh, Closer, which he's sort of the worst in. Like it's kind of wet blank in that movie. Well, that's yeah. his character. Right. Like it's kind of the worst role because he's just like. <laughs> Why'd you cheat on me or what? I don't even. Yeah. That movie is his absolutely performance is not abysmal. super distinctive or memorable. I know people love that movie. I, I, the yeah. Aviator, which he plays Errol Flynn, he it's punches amazing. someone in the face, which is really amazing. fun in little Great. part. So little good. Pop. Uh, Sky Captain, where he played the um, titular role of Sky Captain. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe you haven't read out the full title of that film, David. Yeah, Sky Captain and the the world of tomorrow. In my day. <laughs> It was the world of yesterday. I don't fucking know. No one has ever been more excited for the release of a movie than I was for Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. You have no idea how hard I bought into Sky Captain in the mm-hmm. World of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I never saw it. Yeah, it's a piece of shit. It's uh, now I'm one sorry, of- I'm really? sorry. It's not. I'm being it's mean. It's one of my it's, big it's pretty bad. oversights. I remember seeing it and being like, oh, this is kind of boring and unengaging. It's a little boring. I would like to see it again to see if it, it plays any differently. It's an like, amazing curio now. It's so it's an weird that it thing. fucking exists. It's not a piece of shit. I feel, now I feel like I'm being a snarky- Dude, it's but it's not great. At it's least not great. You're it's just mad great. that I'm right about the holiday, no. and it's sort of affecting how you speak to the rest of us. His final O four is where he played Lemony Snicket in the, oh. but he that's just right. like he should have gotten a nice right, right. For that. right. Yeah. Uh, he should have gotten a golden typewriter. And then in O <laughs> six, he had All the King's Men, probably held over. Yeah, it was Breaking and Entering, the final Anthony Minghella movie, right? Uh, which is a weird movie. Yeah, truly weird. And this. So O four is like too much Jude Law too fast, and I feel like the public response like why is Hollywood and he was shoving like this guy down man alive? It right. was like right, it was a and real barrage. The Sienna Miller thing was happening. Like he, he was just fucking everywhere, and everyone was like, "Whoa, Nelly, slow down!" And Chris Rock made fun of him. Right. O five, he's quiet, and then O six, he comes back, and now it's like, who is Jude Law gonna be now? He's young. He's already had a big tabloid like blow up. He's mm. already gotten two Oscar nominations. What's his career going to be? And this feels like he ain't him. that young, though. At this point? Yeah. How old is he, 30? He's 35. Like, this he's is the thing about He's 35 in this movie? Yeah. Wow. You know, he, he'd been around a while. He's daddy. He's daddy. He's that daddy. is true. Fran, I forgot about that, and thank you for In my day, me. you were father, <laughs> not daddy. <laughs> yes, I am father. 
<laughs> does he have kids? Where are his kids? He doesn't. He had a wife who had a great ass. Right, and, right. Sorry, laugh. The two things a woman needs. Yeah. <laughs> Shelly Berman's in there. The great Shelly Berman. He's great. I love Shelly Berman. Yeah. Uh, the year after this, he does My Blueberry Nights. Right. Where he makes some blueberry pancakes for um, yeah. Nora Jones or whatever. And Sleuth, mm-hmm. which is a disaster. really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that's the end of Jude Law as a leading man, in yeah. my opinion. And then much. he becomes a weird character. Because then, yeah. then he locks into, like, uh, Sherlock Holmes, uh, Hugo, Anna Karenina, right, where he's like, let me and play supporting roles. And he the Soderbergh's roles. also. Oh, he's a he's mean so blogger good in those. And Contagion. In Contagion right. And then he's great in side effects. Oh, he, like, lets him. his hair yeah. go. Yeah. He sort of, like, gives up on the leading man thing. This is the last movie where he's like, no, I've got a hairline. Yeah, normal hairline right. for a, a, a man with hair on right. his head. Which, like, by the way, Jude Law still looks fucking great. You mean right now? Yeah, I think yeah. right now. I think he looks great in this movie. But this movie's 12 years. You mean, I'm asking right, like, in, tw- are you saying I'm saying in 2018? Both. I think okay. in 2018 he looks great. I agree. I really like the way he looks, and I like the way he's let himself age. I think he's still very handsome, but I think he's got, He looks like, great. I mean, like, in, like, Dum- as Dumbledore, yeah. like, ass yeah, Dumbledore, yeah, yeah. he looks cute as that, where right. he, like, pops his ass on the table. I you like that. You do love this. Yeah. Like, the, the trailer, he's, like, all. Dumbledore, he's sort of, like, you know, yeah, you know, and they're like Dumbledore. What's up with you? And he like sort of just like hops his ass out of the table. That's like, like the <laughs> only thing that makes me want to see that movie. Yeah, yeah I'm very curious about it. And, and I think, but just like him in it. Yeah, like what about the fun. crimes of Grindelwald though? Oh, wait, look, we already tried those. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so much more interested if it was like a like people versus OJ. <laughs> or like an OJ Made in America oh, style, right, right. Where they go, like a thirteen-hour yeah, right. documentary about the. It's, crimes all, it's of all set in the the Wizard Magot. Isn't that what the wizard? <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever it's called. No, you're right. right. I just to me that movie sounds too crowded. Fantastic How many crimes Beasts and the crimes of Grindelwald? <laughs> How many beasts? Both How many crimes? Movie? Yeah, right. Man, What's six the beasts, percentage? Like twelve to thirteen crimes. <laughs> Two plural <laughs> groups of things that sound <laughs> ominous and bizarre. I, I just like he's the, the one thing I kind of enjoy about the Sherlock Holmes movies. He's good. He I like him in the Sherlock Holmes. He's movies. fun now, sort of like playing. I, I love him in Anna Karenina. Like he's that so was good. when I really was he's like, so good. this guy has finally gotten what a great yeah. character actor he can be. Yeah. Uh, Vox Lux, which is coming out soon, especially when this thing posts. But uh, it, he it, is, as I was, I was telling Fran about him at Vox Lux. Yeah, I can't wait. He, oh I my can't God. wait. He's got like a Yankees jacket on the whole time. He's like, eh, yeah, I'm a Yankees Brooklyn. fan now. Yeah. That's it, sort of the new thing about me. Oh, yeah. Fran's a Yankees fan now. Yeah, I'm a huge we, we Yankees fan. We forgot to catch up with Fran. Should we do our segment Catching Up with Fran? Yeah. Catching doing, Fran? Up with Fran. So Fran has walked into the studio, uh, head to toe in Yankees, Paraphus, and Analia. <laughs> She's eating a street hot dog. She won't stop talking about Aaron Judge. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, 99. Yeah. <laughs> People think I don't know. Yeah. She won't stop <laughs> checking a, a New York subway map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the rattling you're hearing. Yeah. She's shaking a bunch of subway tokens in her hand. I don't even know how she got her hand Obsolete. on Obsolete. I yeah. mean, <laughs> no place to even put them anymore. Uh, Fran, Fran how's, how does it feel to be in a city that never sleeps? New uh, Jersey. Uh, <laughs> I guess the main part about living there is that I'm also um I'm walking here. You, you know? are walking. I'm always walking here. Um. Yep. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I'm having a nice time. Yeah. I mean, I love the Yankees. <laughs> I love trash. So you're going full slime right in this time. Hot trash. Oh, you're gonna though, you know? fit right into New <laughs> yeah. Jersey. Yeah. You know, sort of like air cooked trash. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. How do you feel about ditches? <laughs> ditches. Because I spent a lot of time growing up. In you know, ditches. there are a couple. But sure. I, mean, I, I will say, I say it sometimes. Ditch? Well, I sometimes I go for runs, uh-huh. and I was exploring new routes in New Jersey. And there's one I don't do because I'm like too many ditches. Take, it just it. takes me past too many, and I'm always nervous. Uh, Something could come in or out. You don't know? knock them till you try them. Okay, right? good to know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ben, of course, is trying to set up a backdoor pilot for his own spinoff podcast, Ditch Please, <laughs> in which he just ranks the best ditches in New Jersey. And the tri-state area at large. Oh I'm trying God. to learn so much about New Jersey. So if you have a list of ditches for me to sort of check out, please let me know. I'm going to develop a whole like, yeah. Like, like a, a spreadsheet or a spreadsheet or some kind of like roadmap for you. Like good hot dogs, great vintage clothes, porch ditch, <laughs> good porch, good uh, All right. power <laughs> plants. All right. This, yes. this segment is over. No, wait. What? Come on. <laughs> Throw him in a ditch. Hey. <laughs> Uh, a, a thing I really enjoy about having uh, a sister who's like a decade younger mm. is that uh, occasionally I will like uh, recommend a movie to her okay. and she will watch it and be like, 
wait, I didn't understand, like, why this person had a career. Sure, sure, sure. And in the last year, Romley watched both Talented Mr. Ripley yep. and Something About Mary and, like, came back to me and was like, so what happened to Cameron Diaz? What happened to Jude Law? All right, well, let's let's move over to Cameron Diaz. Right, like, the, but, but I think that's what's interesting about the two of them in this movie is, like, this is them trying to hold on to the vestiges of that sort of, like, sparkling, unbelievable, super bright stardom they had when they hit. Yeah. And at this point, they're kind of, like, going through the motions of, like, I think this is what someone people find charming about me. Yeah, and they're sort of styled that way, too, where they're both real. I mean, it makes sense that she is tan, but he's yes. got that sort of, like, fake Hollywood tan. Yeah, She's very sparkly. She's always odd. in her, like, cream sweat. I mean, that's a Nancy thing, I it guess. It is a Nancy but, thing. Yeah. She's sort of playing, like, a Nancy Myers character that's 20 years too young. Like, it's sort of an odd yeah. role. Because she's just, like, I'm just so type A, you know, and, like, I just like everything how it is. And she's, and, like, also, like, a misanthrope. Uh, she's uh, her, her, we're gonna I mean yeah. her character's crazy but can we talk about Diaz for a second yes okay I, you seem like you wanted to say no something. I was just gonna say I think to your point friend both of them feel like Disneyland robot versions of Jude Law and Cameron Diaz programmed to do what they think audiences like from them and it was like both of them were like why did everyone want me to be a movie star in the first place like what was the thing here um, Diaz is very weird because she I feel like hit as this like I mean, like, you know, the mask, she's just like a sex pot. It, the joke is that she's like no, a but, misdirect. No, but she's doing what she became her thing, where she's sort of the goofy, you know, kind of klutzy person as well. well. Yeah. The movie sets her up as like, here's human Jessica Rabbit. And sure, then it becomes she's got that, the gold dress. She comes down on the right, stairs. She's the more well-rounded yeah. human one. Right, right. And then I think something about Mary is where they really solidify it, where it's like, oh, she's just like this ray of sunshine. Sure. She's this very but genuine, again, like, very goofy, very and fun. Also my best friend's wedding which she rules in right oh my god she's so right good in that but she's essentially playing the antagonist in that no the whole point is that she's nice that's the the antagonist is julia roberts i'm saying the journey that julia roberts has to go on is to realize that she's the bad guy oh, that movie is a masterpiece yeah it Did we is. do pj hogan yeah peter pan yeah muriel's wedding what else has he got uh he's a weird one what did he do after peter pan Oh, he did. You know what he did? He did Confessions, Confessions of a Shopaholic. Of a shopaholic. Uh, and then um, Mental. What's Mental? Uh, Tony Collette. It's an Australian movie. Okay. Back with. And uh, uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of fell off. Wow. <laughs> but, you know, that um, Muriel's Wedding, Best Friend's Wedding, Peter Pan. That's a weird trio. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Cameron becomes huge. Uh-huh. And Success of Mary is friend? like a phenomenon. Charlie's Angels is huge for her. I've sure, seen that much camera. She's also doing I've seen her... Best Friend's Wedding and I've seen this and I've seen In Her Shoes and that might be it for me. Seeing John Malkovich. And Vanilla seen, Sky. Uh, and Vanilla seen. Sky, right. obviously. Because she has her auteur run where Gangs she does York, like right. oh, John Gangs Malkovich, Gangs of New York. Gangs of New, I mean. New York, which she's really Nothing. miscast in. Yeah. yeah. She is miscast in that i love that movie to death but she is she's miscast she's doing her best right i think vanilla an sky role. and uh vanilla sky she's phenomenal and being john malkovich she's great in both of those she's really good in being i think those are that's two, probably her best performance. those are two performances yeah. she should have been nominated for yeah and she got like globe noms but no right noms, she got yeah. close and she got sag noms i think too Possibly. um and then and then in her shoes is probably the best of her rom-com performances well yeah, perfect. i love that movie. something about mary right but yeah, I, yeah. I honestly like i would maybe have given <laughs> cameron you, diaz like four oscar nominations if i ruled the world she's great in um in her shoes which is an underrated movie yeah mm -hmm. uh although i haven't seen it uh, since theaters but i remember it being good she's really good and i know some people really stick up for that movie but then there's a weird thing post in her shoes where all her performances start being really mean uh, well, there's What Happens in Vegas. Where she's kind of played as like an asshole. I haven't seen that. She bad teacher. She's bad uh, teacher. She's bad That's teacher. Mean she's movie. bad. Yeah. Mean, mean and bad, I think. Yeah. In my day, the teachers were good. <laughs> they educated the children of America. They weren't bad. No? Yeah. Okay. No, but isn't it kind of interesting <laughs> that she then, like, she stops being, like, goofy, like, effervescent, and she starts being, like, really angry in all There's certain things I, I in her haven't big seen. In comedy, gonna, she's angry. I'm going to throw out to you. Like, night and day. She's sort of klutzy and fun in that one, right? Like, isn't that, again, sort of old, old about, school Cameron? I, that, it doesn't feel very old school. Um, you got um, the Green Hornet. I literally forgot she's in that. 
I like I totally mean, forgot that she's. I forgot that whole movie. The bit in that movie. That movie's weird. The bit in that movie is that she is Seth Rogen's like secretary, right. and he keeps on thinking that they have a thing, and she just keeps on shutting him down. Sounds great. Sounds like a rewarding role. Uh, the counselor, which she's uh, incredible in, and she has sex with a car, and it's the greatest. And that movie rules. But it's weird because they made her redub her entire performance. That movie is completely bizarre. In her the performance is one hundred percent ADR because they didn't sounds, like the voice she did on set. Sounds great. She Whatever. apparently I've only did seen the cars. A Rihanna impression. And they made her redub it in American accent. <laughs> Seems normal. Good, good, good call on the ADR there, yeah. Ridley. Yeah. Uh, the other woman, which is the one with uh, Leslie Mann yes. and Kate Upton, where they like ex- enact revenge on directed uh, by Nick Cassavetes, Jamie L- Lannister yeah. for yeah. cheating on them. Yeah. Yeah. Is she one of those three women? She's Correct. one of the three other wow. women. Or is well, they're all the other women. I guess that's the yeah. idea. I don't know. I, I guess w- I only ever remember Mann and Upton, my two favorite actresses. Of course. <laughs> I would genuinely categorize all of these as angry performances. I think her thing becomes that she's angry. Um, and then her last film ever, and now she said well, she's no, you're retired. Well, sex tape. I, which I haven't seen, to be fair. And then Annie. Well, uh, I was going to say, Mrs. that's her last performance is playing Mrs. Hannigan, like the most unpleasant character. It's true. Yeah. You're right. She plays a lot of sharp edged characters. For right. Some which reason. is the opposite of what the first half of her career was. Yeah. I just think it's an interesting. No, oh, it is. Severe shift. The holiday sort of in the middle. The fulcrum point. Because she's nice and sharp. Yeah. Well, she's so likable, but her whole thing is being like, well, I'm unlikable. Is she so likable? Yeah. <laughs> she definitely keeps telling us also, how awful That she, she doesn't is. have emotions. That she's a, a, a <laughs> fucking robot from the planet. And, and yeah, I, yeah, and I empathize. Yeah, and she's bad at sex. Right. She's bad at sex. She doesn't have emotions. She hasn't cried in 20 years. And yet we constantly see her laugh and enjoy the corrections by Jonathan Franzen. Oh, boy. And she brings like a wheelbarrow of Oprah's book clubs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how she got that on the plane. It's, it's like a I love the two books. shots of both of those books and then totally forgotten the second she meets daddy. <laughs> she like sits down on the couch, reads, I guess, like one book for like five minutes and is like, God, I need to book a plane home. This sucks. <laughs> I am out of here. Um, Go on. No, it's a very odd I like performance. Her. In this, I'm mixed on her, but I like, I like Cameron Diaz. Yeah. It is weird that she just, yeah, I guess just gave up. I mean, you can't top the counselor. No, and she just, you know, apparently she's happy being married to uh, one of the good Charlotte boys. The Maddens, yeah. Is that right? She's That's married to she's a married? Madden. I think Ben G. Oh, you know Didn't what it is? Date? It's Madden 98. That's yeah. who she's married mm-hmm. to. Didn't she date uh, Timberlake? That was a thing. She right? did a while. Uh, I'm uh, trying she, to remember what uh, Matt else. Dillon, she dated for a while. From there, something about A Rod, she dated for a while. Timberlake's best album is about her, I would say. Which is his best the album? Future Sex Love Sounds. Oh, I like just fine. But yeah, That's Future oh, Sex is good. That was yeah. the other thing I was going to say. That's about her? All about her? I think that's what Did he said. Did she bring sexy back? Yeah. Okay. Wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt the momentum we have going in this episode. But what what just happened in the studio? It's it's feeling like significantly more chill in here for some reason. I can't figure. Wait, where did Ben go? Ben. Oh my god. It's me. Vaping I'm ben. back. Vaping. Ben is back. Oh my god. And his his. His Mac computer has turned into a, a Macintosh One, an Apple One. That's right. It's become vaporwave in here. It is vaping, Ben. It is time to tell you about today's sponsor, eLiquid.com, oh, y'all. What a surprise! I love to vape. I can tell. You want to see a cool trick? Please. I call this one Dancing Lucy. Oh my God, he's just exhaled. Lucille Ball doing the cha-cha. That She's one took dancing me on her table. Months to figure out. So check it out, guys. eLiquid.com. It's time to step up your vape game this season with eLiquid.com. Browse through the largest selection of eLiquid hardware, replacement coils, pod systems, and vape accessories you'll find anywhere. But Repl- I, I imagine yeah, yeah. at most eLiquid has, I don't know. Uh, 43,999 items in stock, right? That's all they got? They got even more than that. 44,000. Uh, they have 44,000? Over 44,000 items in stock? That's right. Simple as that. So check it out. <laughs> that was very simple. <laughs> so check it out. eLiquid.com makes vape shopping easier than ever. You don't need to leave the house, my dude. Yeah, you look like you haven't left the house in years. 
I I am just cataloging floppy disk games. You just magically materialized here. You yourself look like you're made out of a vape cloud. I'm not sure if I'm alive anymore. So check it out. You don't need to leave the house at church for your specific favorite brand cool. of, you know, like e-liquid. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, like your favorite coil or any of your favorite products. Atomizers. I love atomizers. I know you're a big atomizer head. Huge I turned atomizer you on head, to, like, yeah. my favorite brand. We they, can get into that later. They call me Atomizer Antomizer. Which is a really fun f- thing to do. Very fun. Everyone likes doing it. Everyone likes it. Yeah. So, all right. Check this out. You can just go on to eLiquid.com okay. and it provides a user-friendly experience with amazingly quick delivery. Wow. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my experience. I got the web got the website currently open right now. Okay. Uh, just here on uh, producer Ben's computer. Yeah, and the website looks like it's like a it's like an angel fire page now because of your vaporware influence on everything. That's true. You transformed I, it. I do that to websites. Yes. Uh, so just to tell you a couple of flavors that caught my eye, just because like I'm always cruising for new flavors. Of course. Um, they got a USA mix e liquid. I'm a patriot. I don't know exactly what that's going to taste like, but I want to know. I, I guess probably a little bit of Michigan, a little bit of Mississippi. Sure. They got a mocha e-liquid. Mocha? You can ha- you know what? You could you could eat dinner. Yeah. Got yourself a little vape dessert. Ooh. Um, you can have like a four-course vape meal. Yeah. I mean, they, they've got flavors. F- f- like, honestly, they got all kinds of flavors. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they got a, a sandwich flavor. Yeah, probably Cheddar Bagel Twist. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. You can get all kinds of different hardware, chargers. Um, honestly, it's a one-stop shop for everything you need when it comes to vapes. Yeah. Wow, this sounds incredible. You know, if only you had, like, some sort of special offer to give us. But even, you know, a, a super-powered vape cloud man like yourself couldn't offer that much, could you? Here's the thing. What? I can't. What? Yeah. So check this out. You go to eliquid.com okay. slash check 30. Okay. Right? And then you use the promo code check 30. You'll get 30% off your purchase plus free U.S. shipping. That just sounds a little tedious to have to check their website 30 times no. before I get a deal. I just That's a lot of time and energy. Why? Spent. Okay, come on. No. What it is. Dial is, up internet. No, no. Listen. For 30% off okay. your purchase uh-huh. plus free shipping sure. in the U.S., Great. visit eliquid.com slash check 30 oh, as in the word check and then the number out. three zero. C-A-D-C-K. Right. And then you use the promo code check 30 during okay. checkout. Um, you get yourself 30% off. Now, terms and conditions do apply. See website for full details. Uh, and then just lastly, I just want to say whether you're looking to make a lifestyle change or improve your shopping experience, eliquid.com has you covered. Oh, my God. He's disappearing back inside of vape pen. And Ben has reappeared. Hey, uh, what I... What I miss? That was incredible. I guess you took a long drag of your e-cig, and when you exhaled, vape and Ben came out. Uh, my nose is bleeding. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um. Maybe you should let him back out again. I don't think I should. Okay, let's just finish the episode. All right, cool. A thing I was going to say that I kind of like about Cameron Diaz in this second half of her career, where I think the movies aren't as good, is she did very consistently make movies where she's paired up with much younger actors which i think is cool uh-huh that she was always sort of a, a an older love interest and they didn't make a point of it because she's sure. older than siegel she's older than kutcher she's older than rogan hmm. um yeah. uh, bad teachers timberlake and siegel like she was always playing like five years older than her romantic co-star she's the same age as jude law that's nice yeah this is the last one i think she's a full six months older than jude law Wow. Mm. Fucking robbing the cradle. Made her. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. So, and then, yeah, Jack Black, we talked about him. And Eli Wallach, you know, he's the ugly. Shannon Sossaman's in this movie. Yeah. Remember her. Which, like, she's the, um, is she the actress? Jack Black's yeah. Yeah. Uh, girlfriend. And she's got like three lines. She in was this. in 40 Days and 40 Nights. I was going to say, she'd had a couple, like, and, and Night's Tale where it was like, mm-hmm. maybe she's a thing. And then she was already definitely at this point, a potential thing. Right. They, it, she's already just. Getting three lines. As no, like, she, yeah, she, she, it rules of attraction is her last big movie. Right. 
And uh, she shows up in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang as well, but she's like gets murdered, again. right? Yeah, Isn't like she an, the like the mystery? Yeah, yeah, pink hair girl, right? Um, um, a weird career, sure. Uh, Ed Burns, Ed who, Burns, we, as we famously are aware, is from Brooklyn in um, no, that other really? movie. Yeah, well, we should uh, David come oh, on. Oh, right, mean, yeah. Now I, remember. I know, I know, I I know that that's like a fan theory that I'm like building up. And it's slanderous. He might sue us for saying that on like. <laughs> <He's, laughs> Craziest thing is he's actually from Queens. It's, it's, <laughs> David, it's unsubstantiated. <laughs> the actor is. I mean, he played a character in Saving Private Ryan in which he was insanely third build. Uh, where I guess, like, if you if you What's sort of like name? sift through, was it his name? I think uh, his name what, Joey Brooklyn or something. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Isn't he insanely second build or a size more two? I Maybe think he's it, second. I build. think he's second. I think it's Insane. Hank Burns, Sizemore. Yeah, I mean it's Hank's. Saving Private Ryan. I mean, Hanks right. gets that yeah. above that. Right. But yes, he is second build. Damon wow. is third build. Yeah. Sizemore's fourth. Wow. Build. Wow. Mm. Absolutely crazy. Vin Diesel, of course, you know. You know the Burns story that's like insane, right? How he got his start? Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe. That he was a PA on Entertainment Tonight and Robert Redford came to do an interview. Okay. And he had made... Uh, uh, the Bro Brothers Mulligan was his first film, right? Brothers McMullen. Brothers McMullen, mm -hmm. right? He had made Brothers McMullen, and was like, "Oh, Robert Redford, right? He runs uh, Sundance, right?" And he like went upstairs, got a VHS of his movie, right. and handed it to Robert Redford in the elevator. And was like, "Hey, can you watch this? Maybe put it in your festival." And he did, <laughs> and it won. Right, like the thing they tell you not to do. Right, like right, don't right. go up to a famous person. Don't go up to with, Roger uh, Robert Redford. Right, like you know those lunatics who like go to Q and As with like their full screenplay, and they're like, "Can you read this?" Right. He literally went up to Robert Redford at an interview and said, with like, a VHS tape. Right, saying like, "Yeah, yeah, Sunday's guy." <laughs> and Robert Redford hey, was I'm just like, a kid from Queens. I don't right. know. And he was like, oh, "But he was handsome." <laughs> Went home, watched I it. I don't know about this kid. He's told Sundance, Moxie. like, put it in the festival, and then it got bought for like two million dollars or whatever. It, it won. It won the dramatic, yeah, yeah award. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, crazy. Um, anyway, in this, he plays a, bi a big, a big douchebag. Yeah, he fucking sucks. Uh, Rufus Sewell plays uh, the world's bag. greatest supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he plays. A, a, yeah, an emotional a toxic terrorist, waste barrel, mm -hmm. like in a sweater. So bad. Uh, yeah, he's good in this movie. So well it starts with like a lot of Kate Winslet voiceover about like the nature of love and the tragedy of love and unrequited love, right? Mm -hmm. She's writing a wedding column for the Daily Telegraph. Right. And this feels very kind of like Bridget Jones adjacent. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, here's like a beautiful Hollywood movie star playing a quote unquote mass mousy sure. unnoticed girl in the office in England. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I get what kind of movie this is. She's in love with her coworker. They seemingly have this kind of emotional affair, but also they have slept together. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not an emotional mm -hmm. affair. They, he's her well, bit on the, she's her bit on this. Right, she's his bit on the side. He has never committed to her. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's always in love with him, and he always just dips into the pool every once in a while, and is seriously dating other women. Yeah, he's awful. Right. Right. He's mm -hmm. got a girlfriend. They have this flirt. She's convincing her friend that someday he's actually going to leave her for for Kate. Sure, he's going to settle down with Kate. And then they announce at the Iris. Christmas party, mm -hmm. at the holiday party, that he's in fact engaged to their other co-worker. Right. Yeah. And I guess it's set up that Kate Winslet is the one who writes the marriage announcements in the paper. Yeah, yeah it's so, so cruel. They yeah. give her a scoop. Her out. And yeah. Nancy Myers also like literally replicates the like push in on her crying face from Sense and Sensibility. Like right. It's literally mm -hmm. the same shot just 10 years later. But I am immediately on board with this movie. I'm like, I am so into watching Kate Winslet Friends nodding. do yeah. her version of Bridget Jones. Trying yeah. to get pick herself off the floor and find love again. And you realize from the very beginning, like, oh, like Kate's really given a performance here. Mm -hmm. Like, she knows she's in a romantic comedy. She knows it's a movie star mode. But, like, there's real pathos to what she's playing. Yeah. And I'm so on board. Okay. Can I g give my opinion? Yes. Bridget Jones is funny. She has, like, personality. Uh -huh. She makes jokes. Yes. Kate Winslet of this is, like, a sentient sponge who just sort of sits there going, like, Oh, no, you're right. I'm sorry. You know, just like as everyone treads all over her. She's the worst protagonist. I think she doesn't have any, uh, any written jokes going or on, characterization right? other than being miserable. She's, she's nice to people. Very polite. I think she plays very it polite. very well. Yes. And as a pro all the gardeners. She's yeah. good at playing a sad person. Yeah. She's a talented actor. Yeah, she rules. I loved yeah, her when actress. I was a teenager when I saw this in theaters because I was like, I also am sad. Um <laughs> 
yeah. I will say now I find I comma two comma. <laughs> <laughs> I will say now she's like the world's most pathetic woman in a way that you, absolutely yeah. you just want me. to literally grab her and be yeah. like, what's going on with you? Now uh, there are people like that certainly yeah. who get like caught up in a bad toxic relationship well, thing and can't like, get out of like it. You, you want to grab the, her and say, in movies there are leading ladies and they're the best friends. And your problem is that you're a leading lady, but you act like you're the best friend. Yes, that's mm-hmm. that's something that happens in the movie. And My she's day. like, thank we, you, and cries again. We, we wrote <laughs> movies on typewriters. And then like a waiter refills her breadsticks and she cries at him. Thank <laughs> you so much. I didn't even ask for more breadsticks. Yeah, I mean, this, like, I'm not saying this is like a great <laughs> fucking setup. No, but it's As opposed terrible. to when we cut to L.A. and Cameron Diaz is oh, no. like. Okay, we're opposite on this movie. Right. When we cut to LA, I'm like, all right, now we're cooking. This I, is insane. This I, is an insane person. I buy 0% of the Cameron Diaz half of the movie. I'm that, returning it that's, all that's, that's to the insane. store. Uh, uh, this insane. is so stressful now to disagree with both of you at different times. <laughs> right, because you're 100% in. Yeah, I'm, all in I'm all in on, on Winslet Black. David's all in on Law Diaz. I'm all out on the Winslet shit. I especially, yeah, I'm 100% I said, out on Bridget Diaz. Bridget Jones, which is hardly a perfect movie, but uh, British people are funny. They mm-hmm. are funny and wry and like sarcastic. David, and, like, once Nancy, again, you don't know this. You have Nancy no frame of Myers reference to know this. Opinion, You're just making accusations. Nancy Myers' opinion of British people is literally just like, oh yeah, they're just like a bunch of polite doormats or jerks. Like, that's Yeah, it. and her sense of humor her is just saying that she's pathetic. Her is also. so bad. Yeah. Right. And like, I hate it from minute one. It's the same shit that bothers me about like a lot of British rom com things. Um, but uh, at least they could be funny. Not funny. Where are the jokes? Nancy, you can write jokes. Th- but Cameron, this is where Nancy's just like, oh yeah, no, no. maniacs from L.A. Oh yeah, no, I, I know yeah. what they're like. Yeah, exactly. It's cranked up to eleven the second she the appears. Second she, what's going in on in her expensive pajamas? Ed Burns is sleeping on the couch already. He comes up and he's like, "We never have sex, and we hate each other." Do you think this relationship's working out? Right. Which the setup is that they got in a fight where she accused him of, of sleeping, sleeping with, with someone like an else, assistant or whatever. He denied it. Right. They went, okay, let's pause this fight. You go downstairs, sleep on the couch. Eight hours later, let's wake up and continue the fight and media res. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Throw shoes at him. Well, if you know, like LA people, I've been to LA three times. This is how it is out there, I found. (laughs) Well, that everyone lives, shoes at you? Everyone lives yeah. in a house the size of a castle. I will say, yeah. if this movie does... And they just start and stop arguments whenever they want. It is a very accurate, realistic portrayal of people in LA in the sense that I watch this movie and every moment go, right, this is why I don't live there. <laughs> exactly. Like, it reminds me, oh, constant whipping winds, <laughs> sociopaths <laughs> in mansions. Like, why wind. is it so warm? It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, well, because of the weird, crazy wind that blows through here like a fucking right. ghost. Like, the winds only affect Kate Winslet. It's true. Well, she's English. She's never been warm in <laughs> <Sure>. her life. <laughs> she's yeah. like, what is this? <laughs> she takes off her parka. <laughs> but don't you think this movie starts and she's like playing like a Gene Hackman character? Like <laughs> yes, just I ranting about everything. It's so good. <laughs> just screaming. She's the world's most successful trailer maker. Right. Even though mm-hmm. her trailer blows chunks. <laughs> she also doesn't edit it at all herself. No, Krasinski like, does it. Right. So it's. I have a question. Is about she this. the head of the trailer firm? Like, what is she? It's she her company. It. She says she started it she herself, it. but it works out of her home only. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here's my big question, and then Fran, you clearly want to win because most trailer companies are like ad agencies where they have an office know, and a lot of employees. I know, but no, she does it herself because she's so fucking good. Because she, she knows- doesn't do herself. Krasinski does it. Now Krasinski's just you know she she directs. He's the technician and and Catherine Hahn as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Hahn was just sort of like her personal assistant. Yeah, I don't know. Right, but do you think Krasinski just lives there? I kept wanting yes. Winslet when she's in the home to like open a door and Kristen, she's just like, oh, don't mind me. <laughs> like, and he's just editing. The same way that like Diaz is on the hook taking care of that dog. Yeah, exactly. Winslet's got to take care of Krasinski. <laughs> like that, don't you think yes. it seems like he basically lives there? Krasinski yeah. has a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is like, um, house takes care of itself. You do have to empty his bucket once a yeah. day, but like, that's it. Like, right. Krasinski only eats dry food. <laughs> right. Han is a mix of wet and dry and you have to, you know, put a little, uh, a, a pill in there. We only feed her fine. once a day, but it's a bigger portion. Right. Krasinski, it's three small portions, <laughs> just a handful or there's a scoop. If, if. <laughs> Fran, what did you want to say about Oh, Krasinski? my question about Krasinski is, do you think John Krasinski in The Holiday is the Adam Driver of Lincoln of 2006? <laughs> of like a guy with a haircut from a sitcom who's just sort of like, oh, he's in this for one scene. That's an incredible question. Uh, it's a great, I mean, indisputably. Can obviously. you ask it once more slower? 
I, ju- I genuinely just want to break wanna down every it. part. Yeah. You just want to live in it. Is John Krasinski mm. in The Holiday mm-hmm. the Adam Driver of Lincoln of 2006? Yes, I believe so. Mm-hmm. Of course. I think so, too. Um, okay, great. 100%. And uh, what was I going to say? Krasinski's there. She, yeah, she kicks out Ed Burns, who finally is like, yeah, I slept with my assistant. Who cares? Like, this is the worst thing in the world. Why wouldn't I sleep with my assistant? And so that's yeah. the end of their relationship. Is this where she says uh, stripping? She says stripping, yeah. yeah. Do you think she learned that word that day? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think she might have run into Eli Wallach at some point. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he dispensed it while he was on one of his, his walks. Back in my day, we didn't 69, we 96. <laughs> that's my current age, by yeah. the way. You know, 96ing, where you rub your butt cheeks against the other person's, the back of their head. Okay. Um, what I was going to say is, they also set up at this moment, Cameron Diaz is the Terminator. Because he complains about the fact, like, oh, you think I want to be with you? What, so you're the only woman who story. doesn't even cry during a breakup. <laughs> and she's like, so what? My problem is that I haven't cried in two and a half decades? Which I have a I have a little hot since the fire. I have a little hot theory. <laughs> okay, I think this movie is in portions very much Nancy being inspired by Garden State. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. okay, because what? Well, because he can't cry in Garden State. Feels very ripped from Garden State. Remember when all the faucets they the yeah. automatic faucets turn on? They can cry, but he, he they can't. yell at a ditch. They do yell at a ditch <laughs> in New Jersey. It's an iconic Jersey movie for that alone. Right? There's the scene of medieval times and they yell at a ditch, making it the most New Jersey film ever made. This right. movie is two years after Garden State, which means she probably started writing it right after she saw Garden State. Possibly. Remember, she does take a while to make her <laughs> yeah. movies. Yeah, they do kind of make that the arc of like, when's Cameron finally going to break down and cry again? Yeah. And the other thing is, she uses the fucking Garden State song. The scene she where does. Cameron she Diaz goes to the bar, go. right, yeah. which is the big end song when they see know, each other. Right. The, well, what are they? Na, na, no, what the fuck were they? Natalie called? Portman. What the band? <laughs> yeah, by Natalie Portman. No, no, the band. Uh, what the fuck were they called? Uh, the, listen, the one this will change your life. The one with Imogen Shins. Heap. Im- no, oh. Imogen. Fru Fru. That's what they oh. were called. That's what that really? band was called. Yes, let go. Jesus fucking Christ. That, that song. Uh, let go. Let yeah. go. That one. Yeah. Uh, here's my take on the crying thing. She just made a movie with an extended crying scene. So she's like, what if instead of extended crying, no cry. Right. There's the weird montage of Cameron Diaz getting Doing angry at her laptop when she's trying to find a place to go on holiday. Right. Which feels like her trying to replicate the Diane crying. And at the there's an iconic I aming scene, just like in some things got to get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where, like, Jack Nicholson's they like, how you doing? Smiley face emoticon. <laughs> Except he reads it out, so he's like, colon, parentheses. <laughs> right. Yeah. He sends her the rhubarb emoji. <laughs> Don't rub rhubarb. <laughs> Have you ever been the, the dancing lady with the <laughs> devil emoji in the pale mood? <laughs> he, he does that. Do you know that, friend? Which part? That people shouldn't rub in another man's rhubarb. I do know. <laughs> I do know. So they're both miserable ladies going through yeah. romantic Who turmoil. Can relate, you know? It's Christmas, mm-hmm. a lonely time. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's a holiday in that it's sort of Christmas is a holiday, but holiday is also what British people call vacation. True. That is true. something to consider when thinking about and what I you do. said, I'm how going you talk on about holiday or how are your holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also. Something to think about when you. Talk derisively about the movie. <laughs> okay. Here's something I hate about this film. Mm. Sorry, Fran, but I think you might not disagree with the point I'm about to make. Mm. I mm. don't like that Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz have no relationship in this movie. There's the one phone call towards the end where they do the bit with Winslet not knowing who she's on There's the line with. There's also the iconic I am scene. Yes. Iconic. Yeah. Right. And, and then them at the end dancing together. Sure. Um, I I feel like it makes the two halves of the movie feel really disconnected. A little bit. I think you're right. And you kind of want to see yeah. them have some sort of relationship, even if it's regular check-ins over the phone being like, what's going on on your end? Because the thing yeah. that's kind of fun is that they swap lies. And I was watching this and I was like, God, I feel like there are other movies that work well where the people have right. swapped lives, but it works because they know each other yeah, and you understand it. Is this movie improved if she's like, I really need to go somewhere. What if I call my old pal from college, Iris, I have or an whatever. even better pitch. I have an even better oh pitch. Oh my God. But I was like, what? Well, what am I thinking of? There's like another movie where someone does this and they like swap lives. And I was like, oh, it's The Parent Trap. 
No. Uh, sure. This is like a <laughs> shittier adult version of the parent trap. Okay. I just feel like they're we talked about this in the parent trap episode, but I love that the first 30 minutes of that movie are the two of them together, neutral zone at the camp. Mm-hmm. And then they like prep each other for what each other's lives are like. And then the first time you see each of their lives, it's through the eyes of someone seeing it for the first time. Okay, but how does that work in this movie? Because I think it's kind of ruined the swap by the fact that you know what their two lives are like. So when they get there, you're like, okay, yeah, I know Cameron Diaz isn't going to like this. Okay, when's uh, but like there's, this? Uh, yeah, but then you would, she, but would, then they she would know that Jude was daddy. Yeah, she doesn't know Jude's daddy. I, I, well, by the time they talk on the phone, it's sort of like, oh, I wish they had talked on the phone before. Can then I, she knows that Jude is daddy. Can I tell you my pitch? This is my pitch. Mm-hmm. The movie starts with them stuck at an airport. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we've all been there. Some sort long of long layover. Long perhaps. layover, mm-hmm. some midpoint, some neutral zone right, where they're, they're both trying to get mm-hmm. flights back to their homes, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And they're sitting at the bar talking. At the airport bar, they start commiserating together. This is like mm-hmm. the first 10 minutes of the movie yeah. about how miserable they are in their lives, their breakups they just went through, how stressed out they are at their jobs. And they're just like, fuck it. You get on my plane, I'll get on your plane. Right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I whatever. Like that. And fine. it's like you board, you land in this other place where you have no notion of what life you're about sure, to enter you're still, into. Because this movie needs the sort of developing surprises that like bubble mm-hmm. up, such as like Jude Law is daddy, right. the bath is small, right. and then on Cameron Diaz's <laughs> end, like she has curtains. Right. That's a huge twist. But those surprises <laughs> like, are like fully surprises to us, the audience as well. Um, but also it's like you watch yeah. these two lives and you're like, okay, these are two Nancy Myers lives. And then they switch places, and Cameron Diaz hates everything, and Kate Winslet loves everything. Mm. And, like, that L.A. mansion is very garish to me. Oh, it's fine. I'd, I'd happily Kate Winslet's Cottage is the most weeks. charming romantic comedy movie set of all time. And, like, Cameron Diaz acts like she's living in a coal mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I... I'll, all right, well, I'm going to argue with you again. Okay. Because Cameron Diaz's mansion... Yes, perhaps not to my taste yeah, if I were taste. to own a mansion. Yeah. But if I were, it's like a hotel. Like if I were, I, I'd be like, oh, it's got everything perfect. Big like, bed, curtain, screening yeah, room. Yeah, Santa Ana wins. Nice. Right, I exactly. love the idea of going to LA and just only watching movies in your home. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> right. feels accurate. Yeah, she, Punch Drunk Love. She's got the largest Steve Glick. She's mm-hmm. got Punch Drunk Love of on DVD. Only, only Sony movies. <laughs> right. The thing I love is that Sony movies always, every character in a Sony movie has a Vio laptop. Right, right. And owns a bunch of Sony products. Gotta have that synergy. Right. Um. Because your DVD case is like identity, uh, yeah. anger management. Yeah, it's like identity. all yep. Sony movies of the first five years of the 2000s. Um, and then, yeah, you know, where Kate Winslet is, is quaint, yes, and beautiful. So idyllic and movie but style. Having having the tub small. Been in England. On vacation, yeah. Uh, on holiday. Uh, thank you, good whatever, correction. Whatever you want to tell yourself. Uh, those places are so fucking stressful <laughs> because of, of the things like some of the jokes she makes, like those fucking roads that are so tiny and like, yeah, the lack of amenities. I get that. And everyone in Eng- everything in England is designed for like tiny people. I get that. Mm-hmm. But this is an area in which I think Nancy's aesthetic sensibilities hurt her mm. because she doesn't want to put anything on screen that isn't beautiful. So okay. even if the joke is supposed to be this house is inconvenient right. it and looks it's small, right. it looks too nice. Yes. Like, it's so perfectly art-directed. And also, I mean, if I can actually... You wanted me to weigh on it. I mean, it's it's set in Surrey. It's set in Goldeming. Like, or Godleming? Godalming? Yeah. I can never pronounce the name of the uh, town. Goldmember. This, Go on. Yeah. This is like one of the richest towns in Britain. Mm-hmm. There is no way that either of them could live there. I assume family might. Like, that has to be and the she, reason, like, works right? works at the Telegraph. She works like, at the Telegraph. Law so, lives yeah. in a mansion. Yeah. yeah, no fucking way. How and also, far her, is she from London? It would be an hour's train ride to, like, Waterloo. I mean, it would be, like, okay. a, a, a like, doable suburban yeah. commute. Yeah, that's what I can Mini figure Cooper? out. Yeah. yeah. She has a Mini Cooper. Right. She maybe drives. That would be a pain. But, yeah. like, she certainly has to drive down her, like, 14 mile fucking you know road to the right. shire that you have to go down every time just to get to her house she's maybe so depressed and lonely because she lives so far <laughs> away from any other person I, I never can meet anyone because i live in mordor like, like for someone who works in the city at a big paper yeah it's weird that she lives in someone's like weekend home she lives in what is sort of dressed up as a weekend home right right yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you probably, if you, I mean, her look, whole lifestyle is designed around how nice it is to be alone. And then she's like, I'm so sad. I'm alone. <laughs> yeah. And she tries. Let's talk about it. To Sylvia Plath herself. Oh, yeah. 20 minutes into the movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's and, so and look, dark. David, this is a great, so dark. at this point, talking about Kate Winslet's attempted suicide by oven. <laughs> yeah. 
This is a great point to transition to a regular feature we do during this mini series, in which we cut to my sister, Romley Newman, to report on the kitchens of Nancy Myers movies. Here, piggybacking off of a suicide attempt, is Romley Newman's Kitchen Corner. Welcome to Romley's Kitchen Corner. And here is your host, Miss Romley Newman, in her kitchen. Hi, I'm reporting from a kitchen, and today I'm going to talk about two kitchens. The first of which is Cameron Diaz's, which is exactly what I hate in a kitchen, but I think is so amazing, and I love it, and I want to live there and cook in it. Uh, It's very L.A. modern, very sleek. You have that slate countertop. It's huge. I mean, it's an ungodly size for a kitchen, but it's really nice, and it looks kind of straight out of the Restoration Hardware catalog. It has these dark tiled floors, huge table in the middle that's light wood, and a lot of black cabinets and a lot of light. Um, but it's I would love I would love to cook in that kitchen. And then I give Nancy credit for Kate Winslet's kitchen because it's fairly realistic, and I'm proud of her for not sticking in like an incredibly fancy stove or a sub zero refrigerator into a Surrey kitchen because that just wouldn't happen. Is that her best kitchen? Absolutely not. But is it a charming kitchen? Yes. Thank you, Romley. Very good. Uh, All her appliances are way too nice. Like when Cameron Diaz is like fumbling and frustrated with the coffee machine, you're like, that's a $250 (laughs) coffee machine. Well, also, why does a rich LA person not know how to use like a coffee machine? She She would have have plugs work. (laughs) No, uh, fucking um, uh, Krasinski, he does it all. Oh, sure, sure, sure. He makes Mm -hmm. the coffee too. Or maybe Han Han does the coffee. Yeah, Han does the Mm. coffee. She's on coffee. She's got a headband on, so you know she's serious. It's true. Han is so good. I'll tell you, like, watching this movie... Not in this. She no, doesn't she's do anything. Yeah. <laughs> but in general, yes. But watching this movie, I get frustrated that, like, Nancy Meyers' role slowed down. Yeah, because she could make a Han movie now. Maybe. But she loves to work with movie stars. Feels like she should have gotten to make a Han movie. Feels like she definitely should have gotten to make a Krasinski movie. Like, it feels like Krasinski was probably next in line she to be a love up, interest. Because, she was right, winding up. She was winding up. Krasinski's in It's Complicated, And then complicated, he's in It's right? Complicated in a right. bigger role in which, of course, he is absolutely devastatingly good. And we'll talk about it next but week. But his comic relief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want him to be a romantic lead in one of these movies. Or right. at least a romantic prospect. Right. And instead, he became the director of a horror film in Jack Ryan. Right, yeah. but he had his couple sure. of like he did the big miracle with Drew Barrymore, and he did uh, uh, what should we call it? Uh, something a uh, borrow. But he's the friend in that too. He's the comedy. Right, but he signed on for that because the sequel he was supposed to be the romantically like it felt like yeah, John Krasinski mm-hmm. never got the big rom com that everyone wanted him to get because the rom com just died. died. Right, right, right. right so right, it's so yeah. frustrating to watch this and being like we were so close to her probably knowing how to do it right. Anyway, Kate Winslet tries to suicide herself with an oven. But is interrupted by a phone call. And then it's like, mm-hmm. what am I thinking? Or, Terrible. Right. Oh, <laughs> ghastly. Yes. She's interrupted by an IM, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's interrupted by like Hagrid coming to tell her she's a wizard or whatever the because fuck. Because she's had a listing up for... <laughs> Five comedy points. She's had a listing up hollow. online to try to rent her house for a long time. Right. Which, and no one's been like, up? oh, let me live in this, like... This is fabulous. Like, right, I love this to is be a here. great getaway. And Cameron Diaz is like, What's up? You know, can I stay in your house? It's a house swap. Cool. When can you leave? Right now. ASAP. Are there any men, though? No. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. They hate men. They hate men. Fran, you want to weigh in on men? Who among us has not tried to take a vacation to get away from men? Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, I mean, men, that's, no, men that's why I'm going to theme mascara this uh, Christmas. Right. Mm hmm. So I'll joke about the uh, twenty uh, seventeen picture Wonder Woman. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the mascara, uh, uh, land of uh, Amazonian women. So uh, you uh, think Nancy could work with Gal? God, that's good. see watching these movies. Don't you get frustrated going like, who are all the big movie stars that Nancy didn't get to work with or isn't getting to work with now? Like, wouldn't you love to see a Gal and Krasinski rom com? Come on, friend. What do you? Nancy got? should work with Chris Pine. <sighs> I would love uh, to see, new, Nancy see with Pine. Fran had this like brewing thought, and I was like, "This, this is going to be good." Yeah, I know she'd be so He'd be good so with him. Good, yeah, honestly, she'd probably be good with any of the Chris's. Give I, her a Chris. I think yeah. I say this in our next yeah, episode. Pratt. Maybe she'd be fine with Pratt. Maybe old Pratt. Old Pratt, like, like former Eli Pratt. Wallach? Yeah, <laughs> <Trevier> Pratt. <laughs> Um, it wasn't Guardians of the Galaxy. We only had to guard the solar system. <laughs> Sorry. I think I say this it's in the it's every con- time. In, in my day, we had MCU Phase One. 
Today we have MCU Phase 3. <laughs> phase 3. In my day, an MCU phase was only five pictures. Now it's 12 pictures. Um, okay. What I was going to say is, I think I say this in our It's Complicated episode, but it feels like Jennifer Lawrence is someone who really needs a Nancy Myers movie. Sure. I mean, I feel like she needs uh, something a little lighter. And she needs like yeah, lighter as well. Yeah. She needs like a my best friend's wedding and something maybe where she plays someone who is her age, right? Like mm-hmm. not. But like my best friend's wedding kind of saved she Julia actually played Roberts. Eli Wallach in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is when she first. She went straight from the Bill Engvall show to playing Eli Wallach. <laughs> yeah, it was her first Oscar play. It didn't work out. No, it didn't work yeah. out. Um. And Nancy Myers did direct Winter's Bone. We should point that out. Yes, she did. Yeah. What if she had? Yeah. All the beautiful teeth were kitchen, sparkling light. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they swap houses. Come on, let's get back to the okay. plot of the holiday. Yeah. So they've swapped houses, and now Kate Winslet is overjoyed, and Cameron Diaz is miserable. Right. Um, Cameron tries to read one book for five minutes. Right. Instead, drinks like four bottles of wine, gets shit faced. Cameron Diaz gets drunk a lot in this movie, but we don't really see it. It's like referred to. Yeah. Right. Like she, there's a scene that's not in this film where she gets like blackout, blackout drunk. Out. Yeah. Right. And like they kind of talk around like what a nightmare she mm. was during that yeah. moment. She's so horrified that her bra's on a chair. It's like it's her own bra. And she's literally okay. already had sex with him. Like, yeah. It's not like. That reaction is so crazy. It's she's like, li- she's my like, bra. Gasp. <laughs> but this movie also does this weird thing. Okay. So she's there drunk, miserable, planning to fly home the next morning. Yeah. Right? She hates it so much mm-hmm. that she books a return flight. Right. She tries driving into town and can't deal with the road. She's on the wrong side. She hated that she had to walk all that way because the guy dropped her off. At the She's beginning in stilettos, of, right, of course. She's in stilettos. She's got the a LA big shoe. wheelie bag. Right. Yeah. Which, this all feels like new in town bullshit where it's like. You mean the Renee Zellweger movie? Yes. Okay. Where it's like this fancy lady isn't used to living in such a podunk little town. Sure. But once again, it's also like a dill. Like, it's like Snow White's like cottage. Like it's right. like It beautiful. also just, again, the most. Uh, Obvious complaint. It never snows that much in England, in the south of England, ever. Which this movie has. I just took a I mean, lots of movies. Love Mm -hmm. actually pulls that shit. You know, lots of English movies pull that shit. This movie has, I think I maybe hinted at in other episodes, had a $20 million CGI budget because they CGI'd all the snow. Right. Because it it would be impossible. Because they shot on location. They shot it in one of those little, I think it was uh, Godalming, however you fucking say it. Yeah, but you know what exists? Fake snow. But, I mean, they have to coat, like, whole, like, towns in the fucking stuff. fucking White Christmas. Look at the history of movies with snow. But those are soundstage movies. Like, I'm assuming the town was like, yeah, you're not dumping snow all over this town for a week, Nancy. Like, we're letting you film here, but, like. This movie had a $20 million CGI budget. Damn right. 10 million was the snow. Yeah, it was the uh, 10 million. Jude Law's hairline. The other 10 million was digital touch-ups on the actors' faces. Wow. Which, at the time, was They extended mm -hmm. Eli Wallach's earlobes by 15%. (laughs) (laughs) Droopier. (laughs) At the time, that was seen as insane, and now, like, every big movie star movie does that. Right, right, right. Just make them hot. Yes. Everyone looks a little... Plasticky? Yeah. Yeah, a little mm-hmm. burnished. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like they've just had a spit shine, they you know? They look like rabbits. They yeah. look like animatronic. They do look a little funny, especially Cameron and Jude. Jude. I feel like they're, I, so I think they're the ones who airbrush the most. Right, because yeah. in LA, you just kind of assume people look like that, maybe. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. they're all already in their weird, like, plastic house. Right. Oh, oh but Jude Law comes over blackout drunk. Yeah, let's yeah. do the Diaz part first. We don't have to switch between. Let's just yeah. say that he shows up while she's listening to Mr. Brightside. Just That's has true. To be she rocks out to the killers. Mm-hmm. Right. Singing very badly to herself. This is mm-hmm. another Nancy Myers movie where she, yeah, it has like a soundtrack where she's just like, what are the hits? Because like <laughs> something's got to give begins with Butterfly, as mm-hmm. we've talked about, which is crazy. Yeah. I don't Do disagree. Agree? Yeah. Because that, that song was like four years old at that point. That's yeah. the weirdest part. But anyway, yeah, she rocks out to the killers. I feel like there's another That's hot That's pretty young, contemporary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, she plays hot in here, right? There's uh, Jets. Um, oh, that's what it is. It's that what song. Is, what is it called? I don't say. Oh, oh are you going to go my way? Go. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Jack, yeah, Jude Law shows up shit faced, I guess. It's normal. I mean, what? He seems fine. <laughs> he's yeah, like, he's can I sit giggly. down? I'm so drunk. Like, <laughs> right? You seem fine. He's, he's like Griffin after one Mike's Hard Lemonade. <laughs> he's trying. Hey, look, I hold my mics. Bam. I hold my mics well. <laughs> when I get hard, I stay hard. Oh, boy. Cut it out. <laughs> Keep it in and double it. <laughs> oh, 
boy, this episode's a masterpiece. What I was going to say is, yep. Jude Law shows up, mm. blackout drunk. Yeah, so mm-hmm. drunk. <laughs> Am I so drunk that I think you're my sister? Sure, sure. She's like, no, your sister left and didn't tell anybody. He did say, he says. He said she tried to call. She tried to call and he ignored the call. Okay. A minute later, they fuck. Okay, they, they have, chat for a while. They have a, a pretty deranged conversation. They have a, a conversation that's insane. They Fran, have did one you take minute notes? of deranged no, conversation. It's longer than that. It's long. They talk on the couch. She does this. I mean, I, this comes up in other Nancy movies and in rom coms in general. But Cameron does my favorite delivery of romantically just stating the circumstances of what's happening. Where she's just like, okay, so I'm in this house temporarily, and you show up out of nowhere, and I'm like, I know this. <laughs> right, this <laughs> you just have to tell me. <laughs> it's true. They do a lot of procedural recapping. This is my hot um, take on this movie, uh-huh. is that Cameron Diaz is essentially written as one of the What Women Want characters, except all her internal monologue stuff is said out loud by her. <laughs> right. sure. The whole yeah. scene where she's trying to figure out where she's going to holiday, she's like, I got it. A holiday. Let me look through that. No, yeah, too far. English. Too close. Like, she keeps on saying <laughs> everything out loud that she's searching for on the computer. Well, at all tracks, because her character in this film is a psycho. So, like, I don't know. And it's also a movie trailer editor so, who true. starts oh, yes. having nightmare right. fantasy sequences where right. she's a trailer and where, Hal Douglas. Yeah. I feel famous- like that would be a regular part of her life at this point. Right. Also. Yeah. He, his voice would just have, like, incepted into her mm-hmm. brain. Right. But um, she, yeah, basically says Strange to Jude Law, combo. like. Yeah, I'm horrible and bad. Do you want to fuck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. she says she uh, that Notably foreplay is sex. overrated, yeah. which is right. a line that I heard as a 15 year old, not fully understanding that sure. this character is insane, and right. also and like, like that's meant as a joke. I'm like, okay, she's hot, and foreplay, so foreplay is over- must be overrated. Okay, so foreplay sucks. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to keep this in mind for when I'm less busy with extracurriculars and finally having sex. Um, yeah. And I really think that line damaged me for <laughs> mm, five to six years. So interesting. <laughs> Two statements she says so close to each other that are totally unrelated. One is that foreplay is dramatically overrated. The other one is that all of her exes say that she's bad at sex. I wonder if there's any... Is there any... I mean, I'm just trying to figure out. Anyway, And they, Jude is just like, you're so interesting. Yeah, Jude's <laughs> like, well, what's going on? Right. But what we don't know, but we'll find out, is essentially like, this is Jude's weekend away from the kids because the grandparents have them. So he's basically like, mm-hmm. look. <laughs> like, yeah, he doesn't care. What, what, this is fine. You're not my sister? Great. Let's smash. <laughs> In his sister's bed, I assume. Or the couch, sure. maybe. I don't know. Yeah. No, well, probably they, in the bed. She, she oh, they, there's a upstairs. later scene yes, yes, in the yes, bed. Yes, right. yes, yes. Uh, it's they kind of messed up. Eh, okay, maybe, maybe so not. This eh, feels maybe normal. Got a, got, like, a, got a bone in her bed. This feels like Nancy's idea was. <laughs> Fran didn't like that. <laughs> uh, they, sorry, what, what? This whole half of the movie feels to me like Nancy's big idea was: what if I do a rom com relationship in reverse, where mm-hmm. they fuck the first time they sure, meet, sure, and then they mm-hmm. fall in love, and then like it builds up to them having the intimacy to like have a conversation and sure. hold hands. Right. Uh, and, you know, Cameron's problem is that whatever, she's insane. And Jude's she problem is feel. like, yeah, right. His problem is that <laughs> he is daddy. He is He's daddy. daddy. His wife right. died. So he hasn't had time to, like, be with adults. Wait, like, he reads cookbooks, for goodness. Oh. He sews oh. and he has a cow. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, he has two children who are clearly competent enough to run a business <laughs> together. Like, I don't think Jude really needs to be there at all. They're fine. Like, right? Yes. He feels almost entirely superfluous. He's bringing napkin head, but, but he, that's about it. He doesn't want her to know that he has kids because he doesn't feel like the two halves of his life are compatible and sure. it's a package deal. So he spends the first half of the movie being weird when girls text him, which is supposed to be a red herring that maybe he has. Yeah, because like bo- both of the names, Olivia and Sophie, Sophie. right? right. Mm-hmm. And, she, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I looked both times at his cell mm-hmm. phone. Right, because it was back on, in the day where your cell phone would have that little window that yes. just would put like a name. <laughs> it keeps on walking away from conversations to have phone calls, and then you find out no, he's daddy. He's daddy. She's staying. She cancels her flights before the daddy. They go on that weird date. They go on their lunch. Where I she's love their lunch like, date. Like, what's your deal? What the fuck? Yeah. Where'd you go to college? Where'd you go to high school? Let's like how talk yeah, he's right. so sweet during it. They I have know. such nice sweet. chemistry in that scene. I really do. do think. I I would agree with that. Is Jude? I think Jude is doing a little more than her in terms of bringing the chemistry. Like yeah, or bringing it to well, normal. He's pointing levels. out that she's a psychopath. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's like, you're really interrogating. But in a me. way that's nice. Where yeah, he's like. 
He's like, I'm nervous. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right, right. It's very. He's so good in because, this. Like he's going like, I'm a book editor. I I studied literature in college, and she's like, cool. I come from Alpha Seven. I was born in a crater <laughs> on my planet. The ritual is you have to fight the Gernuki beast for dominance. Yeah, I'm an alien robot. She feels like an alien impersonating a human being in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Now Sometimes women are aliens. Yes. She drives to his house unannounced. Well, yeah, she drops by Before that, we get no her reason. her sort of background, which is that her parents divorced. Sure. Her, when There's she was always 15, a divorce in a Nancy movie. Yeah. Uh, and this damaged her forever. The last right. time she ever cried. Yep. Yeah. She thought they were the three musketeers. You know, Ben. Yes, Griffin. I've been, I'm in the middle of moving. Sure. I'm part of a move. That's uh, uh, taken uh, 17 years, it feels like. This has been the most drawn-out, extended move of my life. You just moved. I did. Here's the thing I find when I move. All this stuff. Why, why do I have all this stuff? And it's because I want to hold on to my memories. Sure. But they're heavy. They take up space. They're burdensome. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's almost this thing where it's like, why do I even bother having physical media? Anymore? Exactly. But Lexibox, who are sponsoring this episode of the show, sure. okay? What they can do is they can digitize all yeah. your old home movies and put photos. It, put it in the cloud. Yeah. You know, you, you save your family films and photos from degrading or being lost forever. People who don't carry a VCR around with them from apartment to apartment like I do. Now, you know, you don't need formats. You don't need new plugs and stuff, you know? Yeah. You, this is what you do. You send your legacy box filled with old home movies and pictures. Then you know what you do? Nothing. They do the rest. They professionally digitize your moments onto a thumb drive besides your thumb or a digital download or a DVD. It's easy to follow instructions. Safe, uh, safety barcodes included for every item. You receive all your original recorded moments back if you want to hold on to everything like a hoarder like I am, along with perfectly preserved digital copies. They sent me the box. It's easy. They send you the box. Right. Because I heard about this company. I went, oh, God, where am I going to find a box? They send you a box. With everything you need, you just put the stuff in and send it back to them. They are the world's largest, most trusted digitizer of home movies and photos. Over 450,000 families have trusted Legacy Box. This is delicate materials. Right. You, know? you go, oh, what? Over 450,000 people? No, families. Uh, yeah. You moron. Families have multiple people. That means it's probably like 17 gazillion people have trusted legacy box over a decade of experience all the work is done by hand it's got that artisanal hand made quality handmade digitizations all in the u.s all in the u.s baby america so i think if our listeners mm -hmm. perhaps are interested in using this service yes i think we got something to hook them up Look, I mean, I don't want to say this too loudly because a little bit of a secret is a little bit on the download. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what you gotta do, okay? But you could say it clearly so everyone actually can hear you, right? But maybe meet me on a street corner with like your collar up. Sure, sure, sure. And no, I'll, but, like, I'll hold up a newspaper so people can see my lips moving, and then I'll say, "Visit legacybox.com today to get started." And here's the exclusive discount, okay? For a limited time, they're offering my listeners an exclusive discount. You go to legacybox.com. Don't look at me. Look somewhere else okay. as I say right. this. Sorry, you're right. Legacybox.com slash check to get 40% off your first order. Save up to 200 on the largest Legacy Box kit. Go to Legacybox.com slash check. Save 40% today. Get started preserving your past. Who can digitize memories? Oh, my God. Dan Candyman. Dan. I thought you were... I'm here for Ad Read Infinity War! Oh, yeah. Everyone's long gone. That happened like two ad spots. Ago. Yeah, that was that was hours ago. Once again, everything you do is convoluted and, and slightly wrong. Well, you don't have to be so mean about it. I was just trying to bring some joy into your lives. Oh, well, you made him sad, Griffin. Yeah, why don't you take a picture of it so you can remember it longer and then have that picture digitized by Legacy Box. Oh, he's... Moping out of the studio. Yeah. It's not a bad idea, though. I'm going to take a picture quickly. And once again, go to legacybox.com slash check and you can save 40% today. There's never been a better time to digitally preserve your memories. Legacy Box, baby. Wow, that was the most epic crossover event in history. Oh, 
God. I... That's incredible. I God, I don't even. I mean, I guess we got to go back to talk about the holiday, but it feels like the whole world has changed let's, now. Let's right? talk about the Kate Winslet. Part. Okay. I mean, we I like talked that about you call, some of it. You're calling your shot there. I'm not calling my shot. I'm saying what just happened live on mic. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Iris, who is. I already told Fran this at our screening of Venom. Um, Humble Brack. He's rude. Name, Venom's got a rude dude. Oh, boy. Really? That Venom. Is oh. he a little stinker? <laughs> He's a Just as stinker. a native Midwesterner, I felt a little sort of <laughs> like put aback. off by his attitude. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, bad attitude. No, uh, Iris in Does this Venom movie. Does Venom have a chain wallet? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Venom's basically Poochie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, Venom, does Venom fuck. have like a bunch of scenes where he like corners a woman at a bar and yells at her about communism could have worked? <laughs> yeah, Venom really rants about Bernie a lot in this movie. It's weird. Venom's a Bernie bro. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I mean, Tom Hardy's character actually is kind of a Bernie bro. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, eh, homelessness is a problem in America. <laughs> like that's like sort of his deal. <laughs> I'm asking tough questions. Like, why are homeless people? I don't know. Venom. Is Tom Hardy, because you've seen Venom, so and I'm, you're living in a post-Venom world, and I'm right. living in a pre-Venom world. Is Tom Hardy going to win my blankie this year? He might make the list. I don't think he's going to win. You never know. With me, though? It's a, it's a magnetic performance. That's all I'll say. Okay. I want you to see it. It's very, you might hate it. I just think I'm going to love that performance. It's, it's, I, my thing watching that movie is like, I can't say this is a bad performance because I am so... I want more of it. I'm so entertained That's by it. That's usually my like, favorite kind of exactly. performance. You know, like, right. even if, like, maybe if you were like, but a person would never behave this way and under any circumstances, I don't care how crazy the movie is. You're like, yeah, but uh, I just want to see him do it. Like, you know, I don't care. Like, give me that. This has been... Ace of pains. This has been... Ace of pains. This has been spoiled for me. Okay. Uh, but by the time this movies, episode comes movies out, movies everyone come out weeks it. ago, yeah. Uh, I, I've heard about the big set piece in the movie. So is the 15-minute sequence where Venom plays hacky sack in the quad <laughs> as epic as I imagine it CGI's will be? a little squishy, but okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> they flubber the hacky sack. Uh, I'm just a little frustrated they're saving Ultimate Frisbee for the sequel. Because it feels like that's where Venom's really going to pop. Uh, I actually can't wait to see Venom, too. Like, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, I guess I'll see it also. Damn right, you're coming with me. Um, so, <laughs> Iris, named after Jude Law's daughter. Mm -hmm. Weird. Is that nice? Weird. Oh, he the grown woman in this movie. Yeah, weird. Matter. weird. Weird. Okay. Well, for me, it's nice. Fair enough. Iris and Olivia. No, Iris is Kate Winslet. Right. Oh, Olivia and Sophie. Iris, the grown-up, is named after Jude Law's real daughter, Iris Law. Oh, that I didn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> I know. It's weird. That's fucking weird. I know. Well, <laughs> Fran thinks it's nice. Do you think that was like a contractual obligation? Jude Law was like, <laughs> "I will sign on." I think you, uh, Nancy, just had them make like lists of ten of girls' names. I'll throw sort of out something kind of nice and Easter egg for the future. Uh, Peter uh, uh, Serafinowicz named two characters after his children on the tick this season. Oh, really? Like yeah. big characters or little characters? Uh, th they are like characters who will be special effects. Okay. So, so sort of like a thing one and thing two situation? So he could kind of like Have say like whatever he wanted. Right. right. Mm. Interesting. Um, but it's really nice because there's like a group of creatures in the season. Cool. And he named two of the creatures after his kids and then constantly would refer back to them. I love creatures. Which like that makes sense if it's like I'm an actor. I'm going to do a little tribute to my kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Kate Winslet is a creature. Right. And they're like, yeah, you're just named after Jude Law's kids, even though you don't really have scenes with Jude Law until the very end of the movie. Um. So Kate Winslet. Mm hmm. Is loves in curtains. L.A. What? She loves the curtains. Loves those blackout curtains with a button. Mm -hmm. Watches Punch Drunk Love. Swims laps. Swims. Oh, yeah, swims. Swims. Uh, Jack Black comes by to pick up some stuff. Ed Burns' stuff. Right. Uh, oh, Shannon yeah. Sossman's in, oh, in the right. car with him. Yes. To be, he and, gets an eyelash right. off her face because the winds. Talks about the Santa Ana winds with her. Uh, uh, is so fucking charming. Absolutely not the Hardcore. worst. Oh, he's um, so good. No, so he's not. Good. So sweet. Such um, a sweet pie. Cutie patootie. Um, right, but that's the thing. He he's like, like shudderingly nice. Where I'm like, oh my god, you fucking. I think like he is loser. The only character in the movie who seems like a real human being. I totally disagree. Um, is the implication that Ed Burns is also a composer? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. 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 That's what I took. I from guess it. that's how they met. I don't know. 
Or that they have composed together or something, yeah. So I have like a big gripe. I strongly dislike movies in which the characters work in the film industry that aren't about the film industry. Because it always strikes me as a lack of creativity of like, I'm just going to write like what all my friends do. Like the movie doesn't have anything to say about the film industry. Well, we well Jack movies. Black talks about movie scores for 20 well, minutes. And you know that he's an and expert. Eli Wallach says a lot. And you might have Eli Wallach does tell us a lot about the film industry. He does. <laughs> opening weekend. Yeah. Yeah. He, no, he makes some that. very, very salient points that literally <laughs> any five-year-old you stopped on the street would be able to make. Movies are long. <laughs> Sometimes movies are too loud. No, and the Jack Black character, they're like, this guy's such an expert on film scores. Oh, my God. He's such a connoisseur. He likes Ennio Marconi. He likes yeah. the Jaws theme, he's the soundtrack, Han the concert. Graduate. The mission. Hans Zimmer. That's the one weird pick. Everything else I, I have that. to do is great, like the great five most famous That's film Ennio Marconi scores. again. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so stupid. <laughs> right. He, sh- shut up, Fran. Shut up. Oh, my God. Wait. Fran is being taken over by a symbiote. <laughs> Food. <laughs> It's Franum is the now lead, in the studio. The lead of my review, which has now been published, and if this is not the lead of my review, it was Venom my Fox, editor was right? like, get this the fuck out of the, your lead, uh, is that Venom's first word in the movie is food. <laughs> like, that's how he's introduced. In the Midwest, we would say food, please. <laughs> no, not Venom. Food now. Uh, yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Iris, she swims. She meets Jack Black. He's an absolute creep. Turd burglar. He's normal. <laughs> he's normal and nice. He feels like someone who's like, yeah, he celebrates it's like Monica. Nancy's like, this is what normal people are like, right? I yes. guess. But except he, he won't shut the fuck up about scores <laughs> and say squeedly Bob. about his art. <laughs> he loves the macaroons. He says it in his little crazy Jack Black way where he goes, macaroons. <laughs> I think his Arthur <laughs> theme is really thing. good. I can't stand it. His Arthur He's so theme cute. is great. He, he He's so nice. Good. He writes yeah. only the good notes for Iris. Uh, yeah, I like his Arthur theme. None of the bad ones. I want him to say what the good notes are. Uh, Sure, D. You know, and it you gotta think? be A, right? A, right? Yeah. A plus. Yeah. Okay. F sharp. Okay, sure. Yeah. No, I, you're the classical friend here. Come on, weigh in. What's the best note? Uh, F sharp. Damn. Damn. F sharp. See, I I made a mm-hmm. good one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, Jack Black. Uh, yeah, but he's not in the movie much. To be no. clear, I certainly until right at the end. He has a like, girlfriend until one mi- one hour and 40 minutes into yes. the movie. So mm-hmm. most of the first chunk of Iris yeah. is that rather than like, I don't know, go to fucking the tar pits or something. She just stays in the house, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and uh, she meets Eli the Wallach. Once in a car, sees Eli Wallach on the side of the road. Right, who, and he lives in like the, you know, the SAG museum or something. Right. right? Like, <laughs> and, uh, Do talks- you think when she sees the Oscar at his house, she gets the idea to be in the reader? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got an Oscar on a mantle and she just like talks to him about the movies and uh, like, right. And she's like, it. here's your mail. And he's like, ah, oh, six more lifetime achievement award. I don't want any of that. Oh, shit. <laughs> now, a lot of movies like this, it's like this fucking industry. They're full of liars. I don't care. I've been burned by them. I don't right. want to get an award. I literally, when I was watching it this time, conf- had conflated the Studio 60 thing. And I was had like, that too. Oh, yeah. it's going to turn out that he was like a blacklisted writer. Right. No. The That's reason, what I always remember it yeah, as. No. Yeah. The reason why he keeps on turning down these tributes is because he doesn't want to walk to accept <laughs> the award. <laughs> yeah, he struggles with stairs. And I mean, he thinks that like not a lot of people will come. I guess he thinks uh, an old, a washed up old phony like me. Like, who cares? <laughs> only Shelley Berman will be there talking about asses. <laughs> but he's the only. <laughs> he is. David, just to give credit where credit's due. Uh-huh. He's the man who wrote the kid, and here's looking at you, kid. Right. I mean, that he's was a legend. A, that was a note by me. And then they, <laughs> I tweeted it at Joe Mankiewicz or whatever. They gave him the Oscar for that for the kid, best supporting kid. <laughs> <laughs> that, I forgot about that line. That line is annoying. He's a legend. I, I right. mean, he wrote the kid. Right. Do you think it's weird that a vows writer doesn't know the phrase "meet cute"? Uh, Yes, but in England, that is not a phrase. Okay, so I fair. guess okay. that's the defense. Just something I wrote down. It's a weird it's a thing fair for point. him to say because it's mostly a rom-com thing to be like, this is our meat cute. Yeah, I I don't mind it. For some reason, the Eli Wallach stuff is actually the easiest to take for me. It's, I think because he's good in he's the movie. Good. He's a good actor, but I just find like his performances, he offers the most surface level analysis of how rom-coms are written. I know. And every time she treats it like it's 
like Sid Hartha coming back. I know. And, she's like, like unbelievable. So I you're think, saying that two people meet in romantic comedies and like each other? I've been in therapy for 74 yeah. years, and that's the first time anyone has said <laughs> something that rings get true a different with me. Therapist. Yeah, therapist oh fucking God. sucks. Fucking terrible therapist. Yeah. Um, oh, I want to switch back because actually my favorite line in the movie and possibly my favorite Nancy Myers line ever is said by Jude Law. I know. Uh, is it I'm a major weeper? <laughs> That's, that's maybe one that's of mine. Definitely something. Uh, no, it's when he, I think when he asks her out to go to lunch and she's like, why? And he says, because I'm running out of reasons why we shouldn't, which I think is like such a perfect mm-hmm. rom com line. So Nancy Myers and is so, so fits like what's happening with them where it's like, well, we keep liking each other in these conversations we have. Like, why shouldn't we go on a date? I, I love that line. Right, the idea is that, like, okay, kids away for the weekend. Both of them just viewed this as, like... As a fling. A uh, fling, and you know, they uh, keep on not being able to get closer. If you have to a have quick time, smash. Hmm? If you have time to keep having sex, why not keep... I don't know. They're always, like, not justifying it. Yeah, I know. They yeah. should just only have sex. How yeah. long right. is the holiday in this movie? Ten days? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe two weeks tops. Because yeah. he, he says these last couple of weeks at some point. Right. There's also the very weird thing where first night they meet, they fuck. Second night, she gets blackout drunk. Yeah, he right. doesn't sleep with women who are unconscious. Right. She line. loves that about Good him. Good line. Yeah. He sleeps on the couch. Humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Then right. on their third- and she like leaves her bra on a chair. Right. So I mean, obviously, he reports that to the local vicar. <laughs> on their <laughs> uh huh. I'm gonna tell the story. Oh, what? What's the story? Do you leave your bra on a chair? No, 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 no. I'm just, I, I'm removing all names from it. Okay. I have a friend who, uh, uh, like, uh, had, like, a one-night stand with someone she worked with as sort of, like, a supervisor position, right? And mm-hmm. he was, like, an awkward guy, and she was like, is this going to be really weird in the office now that we've slept together and we have to work together, and we're obviously not going to date, and he's not a guy who's very comfortable to begin with. Uh-huh. And he, like, called her into his office, and she was like, what's this going to be? And he, like, very, like, methodically, like, went to his filing cabinet and pulled it open and took out a manila envelope. And she was like, what's this? And she opened it, and it was her bra that she had left at his place. Oh, my God. Wow. And he only knew how to deal with it as, like, a supervisor where it's like, "Um, here's your new assignment. (laughs) But I just love the image Our of like fine. a boss opening up a filing cabinet, <laughs> handing over a manila envelope, labeled bras. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. right. And then yeah. it was just very awkwardly like, "Here's your uh, bra in a business folder." Under F, and here it is. Right. Yeah. Uh, March fourteenth. Okay. Here we go. Um, the thing I was gonna say because I just was becoming obsessed with this during the movie. First night, fuck. Second night, she's blackout. Sure. Right. Mm-hmm. He sure. sleeps downstairs on the couch. I believe is the implication. Sure. Then on their first Maybe proper in the tub, date, yeah. in the first proper date. He says, we've already slept together twice. Mm. So he you, said, we, we've had sex once, we've slept together twice. Mm-hmm. That's what he says later in the movie. Oh. So at first he just says, we've slept together twice. And I go like, wait, so they Maybe they he just slept in the bed with her. And but then he sets own. up the third time, we slept together twice and fucked once. He doesn't say fucked. He said we had sex once. Right. So he's counting like the fact that they slept under the same roof when she was passed out as slept together. Which is an odd thing to say, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess so. But I think the implication, right, maybe he slept next to her. Right. Yeah. That's just what I assumed. It's more that she blushes. She's just like, oh my God, I'm, I'm unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> right. She does that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Very I'm apologetic. Like, Chill out. Yeah. Oh, and then he also says the thing like, whoever your ex was, he was an idiot. I couldn't disagree with him more strongly. That, right. That right. Sex Very was, gentlemanly. Right. The sex was fine. Yeah. I don't know. Why is she good at sex again? Or Maybe are we like, are we to believe that she was never bad in the first place? That's sort of what Nancy leaves unresolved. I think people just are not allowed to have bad sex in a Nancy Myers movie. Like that's just not allowed. I think the idea is that she's like that like doesn't have emotions and she hates foreplay. Like it was probably the most perfect <laughs> yeah, like, sex of all time. Gently was like we could try a little foreplay. <laughs> right. and she was like okay. I mean I guess so. I think it's overrated. Um, but like back in Hollywood like she starts spending all this time with Eli Wallach trying to teach him how to walk again but also like going out on dinner dates with him yeah she fucking is basically a physical therapist like isn't she supposed to be (laughs) on vacation meanwhile Rufus Sewell is tormenting her to read pages of his book sending her so violent she sends a a fucking Blackberry message being like please leave me alone and he calls her he's like oops (laughs) 
guess I rang you. Oops. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you're like, you're like so call bad. the police. So abusive. Yeah. And then, right, he sends the notes, then he shows up. I don't know. Which is insane. Yeah. I, I want yeah. him to like have a little box and then there's like a condom inside or something. Like It's like the worst gesture possible. He like shows up on like Christmas Eve. I know. Abandons yeah. his fiance. True. He's awful. Yeah, he's It's so much maniac. more fun to hate him than any of the ones in love, actually, I think, also. Yes. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, he has. I mean, I hate like, the people. Oh, in, he sucks. You know? Argh, oh, what? <laughs> Jasper. He's, he is, as I said uh, when watching it, a shit. The English mm. would call him. He's yes. a shit. But this whole point in time, Jack Black like shows up for like 30 second stretches, occasionally be like, uh, here's your FedEx. Oh, he's like, doop. <laughs> And to celebrate Hanukkah. Right. He celebrates Hanukkah with He says Manashevitz. He and, says Mac the Right, Jews. right. They have yeah. a nice dinner yeah. uh, with the old Jews. And he's like, that was great. Then Shannon Sossaman calls him and is like, I. Well, from Blockbuster. Right. Or no, no, no. He she, gets the call from her. She's in. She's in. That's when he sets she was, up. She's at supposedly the dinner. in New Mexico filming an indie movie. And he's like, I got no idea where she's with me. She's in uh, New Mexico working on a little indie. She be done. <laughs> It's a normal character. Uh huh. And then yeah, she turns out she's been cheating on him. And then right, they go to Blockbuster, and that's where Dustin Hoffman. Right, he calls is. her up and says, "Hey, can we do the thing that normal people do on a, you know, Christmas Eve right. night, which is go to Blockbuster and just riff on the movie boxes, riff on the scores of the movies in the movie box." You know this story about the Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, thing he was just it. going to Blockbuster, like literally walking down the street. And they were like, can you come in and do one shot? Is that right. true? Yes. yes. I didn't he know saw that. all the lights and was like, what's going on there? <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I've made in some it. movie. He's terrific. Uh, yeah, he won an Oscar. Sort of the sixth though. lead. <laughs> he is kind of the sixth lead. <laughs> and uh, right. So, uh, you know, Jack Black's in the middle of one of his manic episodes where he's like, the graduate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Robinson. You know, Here's to you, Mrs. Rip. And Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> sees him and weirdly does not kill him execution style. Could you imagine being any other customer at the Blockbuster while this is going on and being like, God, does this guy think he's that funny? I need to leave. He's like projecting, like Why very is this loudly. Poor woman scatting, entertaining he's this. Scatting the chariots of fire thing. <laughs> That's the other one, right? Marconi, Hans, and then right, he's like right, Vangelis the changed the game. Yeah, he does the driving Miss Daisy. That's his Hans theme. But he has other thing was he said like big departure for Hans. But that was before yeah, Hans Zimmer like became his first score. That was what people thought yeah. Hans was. It, when he did like Braveheart and shit, people were like, "Oh, he this is a big part. departure." Yeah, that's James Horner. Okay, but when he started doing like Lion epics, King. Lion King. Lion King. yes, Lion that was really the one that changed. Well, one of an Oscar again. Yeah, his only Oscar. His only Oscar. Very strange. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll I win think this, this year. is normal behavior. What do you think he would win for this year? I'm making it up. I have no uh, idea. Does he even have anything this year? He must have something. Um, he did like the Boss Baby and shit. He'll he'll do shit like that where you're right. like, oh, right, Smallfoot. Did he do Smallfoot? Maybe I don't he did. Know, maybe yeah. Um, but, but so they're just like hanging out together sometimes because he apparently has no other friends in LA despite the fact that he lives there and is friends with Ed Burns. I know, and Ed Burns doesn't pop back up. You'd think Ed Burns would be like hanging out with yeah, him, right. right? Yeah, yeah. And Jack Black would be like, yeah, your ex girlfriend is insane, right? Sees Shannon Sossaman, realizes she was only right. filming for two days. She looked up the oh, weather. He did the widow's score this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Though. Okay, mm -hmm. looked uh, up the weather. She looked up the weather on weather.com right. in order to be able to lie accurately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This script does contain the phrase weather.com. Right. Yeah. I said, I I an extra prison all the way to New Mexico. I know someone who's done this, who's done a location lie. Well, Not really. in a relationship. But like a location lie that included looking up the forecast to yeah. be like, right, yeah. yeah. I'm doing a lot of stories where I'm not saying people's names, but okay. I have a friend who was dating someone. Like casually, they'd gone on a couple dates. And uh, she uh, let everyone believe that she died in the tsunami in, like, 2004. Okay. Dark. And then, like, he ran into her and she was like, yeah, I kind of just need, like, a fresh start. I'm sorry I never called you back. <laughs> Great. Um, then, I don't know, Jack Black. What, what the fuck? They don't even. What? I mean, should we talk me. about, should we go back to Cameron? We should talk about I Am Daddy. Yeah, he is daddy. Because that's also Christmas Eve. I know. All right, he's daddy. He's daddy. Yeah, he puts on the napkin head. It's Cameron's weird. movie. Like no one has Christmas Eve plans. Like especially like a yeah. father to two young I will, children. He's I will got a bunch say, of presents under the tree. But like in England, Christmas is very depressing. It's a terrible, terrible time. You have no idea what you're talking. Shut about. 
up because everything's closed uh-huh. and everyone goes to their families. Like, you know, like there's no, so like if you're alone on Christmas in England, it's brutal. Yeah, but like, what about Father Christmas? Well, you know, he's spread a little thin, but sure, he's around. Yeah. And um, he's got two young girls. He'd want to make it special for them. You, yeah, I know. I mean, th- th- the reveal of this movie basically is like, you know, Jude Law, that super handsome, nice man you've been having sex with? It turns out he's great. Like, that's sort of like yeah. the twist of the movie where he's like, he's even better than before. Yeah. yeah. He's perfect. Yeah. He's got two little daughters who are so sweet and bossy. That, that, and that, he's so nice to the them. The kids are so cute. And they're, they're never, so they've never been anything cute. again. They're just perfect cherubs that like. Oh, when movie. the little one says when they invite her to the tent and she's like, I don't think I should go to tents. And she's like, you don't like tents. Oh, I love <laughs> it's a, it. It's a big tent. I feel like they the, got a big tent. Yeah. Small British children, especially small British uh, child actors always uh, say things in the same meter, which I find like unbearably uh, heartbreaking. Sure. Which is like, daddy, don't you want to decorate the tree? You know, it's always like, no, no. Dun, 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 dun. You can't access the umbrella computers. <laughs> like, right? They're the weird, creepy children. Yes. Yeah. Um, they're really cute. They love Mr. Napkinhead. Yeah, Mr. Napkinhead's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's it's talk so about funny. that. He's the it's sixth lead. a really good bit. He puts glasses on. Sure. Over make, a napkin. Right. Over a napkin. Over but then his he face. makes a mouth. He does. That's 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 what really the sets The cherry it on top. And he smokes, so he's cool. But, but he smokes a, a spoon. spoon. Yeah, and then says smoking's not cool to his daughters, but we know as adult viewers that smoking is cool. True. Yes. He keeps the napkin on his face for a full two minutes. Yep. I wish <laughs> he kept it on for a uh, full hour. Can too hard? I, I turned to my... <laughs> She's never felt joy before. <laughs> I turned to my girlfriend, Hobbleback. Hobbleback. And... You said uh, it wrong, so I won that time. Uh, said... You said, it sounded like you said Hollabrag, like you were bragging about a particularly good I was bragging about deli bread. Man. Yeah, <laughs> Hollabrag, okay. <laughs> Uh, I turned to her and I said, oh, I forgot to tell you, this is the remaining 45 minutes of the movie. It's just him doing an HBO comedy special as Mr. Napkin had. Sure. It's a good bit. Five. Did Kills. she give you five comedy points? Yeah, she did. Sure. Good. Yeah. Well, I, I owed her five comedy points for something else, so now we're even. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, then he like, you know, she's like, why didn't you tell me? And he About gets, the napkin head. Right, right. <laughs> right. 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 And he's like... <laughs> You know, that's it's proprietary. I'm still shopping right. it around yeah, right, town. Right. I have a bunch of meetings. <laughs> right. Yeah, Warner Brothers are interested, right. but I don't know. Right. They they have a first look development deal, but I want to get something on the air. Right. And like, I'm we're trying to pry it free because Marty had expressed, you know, but he right. wants to bring it over to mm-hmm. Paramount based yeah. on the comedy stylings of Napkin. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're thinking of doing a tour, maybe, and filming it. Yeah. Uh, the I don't original know. What else do you want to say about comedy? Comedy? That's it. He has a cow and he sews. Yeah, yeah. all this is boring. I don't like it. Okay. You don't like it? I don't That's like insane. Them. It's I don't so like charming. Their That's movie crazy. At all. It's so I charming. Like this part. I like the daughters. The daughters are great. That yeah. scene is so that They're scene all is so good. nice to each that other. That scene yeah. is where the movie is like idiosyncratic again and I'm into yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That scene's great. I just like don't I don't I like this part of the movie better. The Kate Jack part. I like part. the Kate stuff. That feels more individualistic to me. That feels a little She is. Is it possible both of you are right and wrong? Right. That I mean, that's your be. argument. Yep. And Ben's argument. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, back at the kid's side, you know, he realizes things are over with Shannon Sossaman, and then they go out to sushi. Sure. And it feels like they're about to fuck, and then she calls him and ap- apologizes. I guess so. Right? Yeah. Accidental right. boob graze also. Right. Which I feel like was used in the trailers a lot. <laughs> boob graze! Yeah. <laughs> that's like the one joke he has in the movie. It's horrible. If you can uh, even call it a joke. She should she should call the police when that <laughs> happens. That's what she should do. I keep telling everyone in this movie to call the police. <laughs> um, yeah, and then like they're they're planning Eli Wallach's big, you know, uh, Wallach celebration. And He's going to walk the walk 2006. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And Jack Black's supposed to do the fucking music and he's like I, i'm gonna be late by the way oh, home right. again which I, you haven't seen yet right no. literally has the exact same ending it's crazy but anyway with uh, whom you'll see okay um mm. i was gonna say uh it's it's very weird that it's like they hired jack black to write an original score for the walk for a lifetime achievement award yeah, it's a little weird it's a little you strange. get work where you can get work that's yeah. sort of the business yeah though. that's true we don't know how successful he is right like, I love in Forgetting Sarah Marshall that that's Jason Siegel's job, but he just works for CSI. And yeah. like that moment where mm-hmm. he's just like, foreboding, foreboding, <laughs> right? Like, that's yeah. funny. Well, and you know that Cameron Diaz has made the most successful trailer of all time. That's true for the James Lindsay Franco. Lohan Lindsay and James Lohan. Franco. Yeah. That's yeah. Nancy calling in an old friend. 
Yeah. Lindsay. Yeah. 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 Another person who could have used another Nancy. Uh, yeah, who mm-hmm. now she kidnaps children off the streets of Russia or something. <laughs> like, whatever she's up that, to. That's the worst movie of 2018. <laughs> not no good. Question. Um, um go Yeah, on. but let's admit, though, the, the Arthur theme slaps. Yeah, it's yeah. It slaps. Yeah. If you're going to use slaps it. instead he does of fucks, little... I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah well, slaps awesome. is better. Mm-hmm. Slaps, slaps is, is better. better, yeah. Um, yeah, this is all fine. It's just like all of this. And then at the, like, he then, when does he kiss Kate Winslet? At the very end, he shows yeah. up at the last second once Eli Wallach's on because stage. Because this movie is embarrassed kiss- by their relationship and won't let it's them so have one. Sad. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, like, he's finally, like, he kisses her and basically apologizes and, like, comes in his pants. Like, it's, like, pathetic. Oh, yeah. He does his little fist bump. Right. And wow, the movie like is. Like a regular man. I know. And the, and the movie's just like, yeah. So they got together, too, even though, despite having zero chemistry whatsoever. Counterpoint. They're charming. I mean, I was waiting for you to bust that out, but yeah, uh, the movie no. does argue yeah. Yeah. all these people are getting together with their rebounds because it's just like one person who was nice to them after they were sad, and right. that's correct. That and sort yes. of is making I don't know a little bit of a cautionary tale for some. Maybe I agree. Yeah. But then Cameron leaves, but then we do see them a year later, and they all look great. You don't see him yeah. a year later. You see him days later. Yeah, it's that new. Oh, that's right. You're right. right. It's that right. But yeah. presumably, in a year, they're all still together and happy, like the end of Harry Potter. All day too, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How they doing? They all go on holiday together. <laughs> holiday <laughs> and colon. How they doing? <laughs> I want to know. Does it hold up without Eli Wallach? Uh, yeah, you can't do a holiday too once Eli's gone. No. Who else will tell us what movies <laughs> used to be like? Right? I don't know. Some some old. Are they going to run into Clint Eastwood? <laughs> these are like Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> yeah, right. Some nineties relic. Yeah, back in my day, movies cost sixty million dollars. Now they cost eighty million dollars. <laughs> I would be I would be into Nancy and Clint getting <laughs> get, getting together. That'd be uh, great. Let's do that. I read something really upsetting. I have, of course, in the past on this podcast, talked about my most anticipated movie of 2018. Uh huh. I got drugs in my butt. Yep, of course. And then Drug read butt. read a synopsis of it recently because they announced the release date. Yeah, and it sounds like he doesn't traffic the drugs in his butt. He just puts them in the back seat of his car. God damn it. I He's was, no mule. I wanted a 91-year-old Clint Eastwood is a physical drug mule movie. <laughs> like at least swallowing a couple condoms or cocaine in him right. or whatever. And this makes it sound like it's just like, oh, they're going in the back seat where they belong. <laughs> but isn't the movie about like, um, you know, the big government took away my Obamacare, so I got I got to make some money okay, or whatever. Like, isn't that what, what it's about? I thought. Build a wall. But then apparently like, it's just the like premise, a bunch of shit. Apparently the premise is someone offers him money just to drive a car. Okay. And he's like, fine, I'll drive. I like driving. And it isn't until a couple successful traffickings that he realizes what he's doing. But it's from the screenwriter of Gran Torino. Yes. That's where I'm like, hello. Yeah, Coop is in it. Bradley Cooper's in it. Diane Weist, Michael Pena, Lawrence Fishburne. I mean... I mean, that cast Hello. Slaps. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, Yeah, 90-year-old drug meal. He was a real person. You know who's originally going to direct it? Whom? Ruben Fleischer. Really? Oh. Yep. Yep. It's crazy to think that project, I mean, just kind of floated away from him like a turd in the wind. <laughs> um, fettuccine. I'm trying to think yeah, if there's anything. I like the idea fettuccine. of a holiday fettuccine. I think that should it's be. so nice. That should be, be a good yeah, tradition. Yeah, holiday pasta, yeah. 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 Let's have a fet. When he says holiday. Pasta. When he says holiday fettuccine, I picture him bringing out a bowl of fettuccine that's green and red. Holy shit. Like I picture like Christmas colored pasta oh sure you could you yeah. know spinach right. pasta and all that right, right. Mm-hmm. um uh do you think boba fett likes spinach do i think boba fett likes fett? what's the joke here his name it's fett fett oh <laughs> boba fett um all right everyone leave <laughs> get out i didn't say anything if boba okay, fett was Fred, pasta, what would he be called? i'll just so keep called doing another two hours on the holiday <laughs> I have I have all kinds of other thoughts we didn't get to. Way in, Ben. Come wait. On. All right. There's He's a part. Gotta, oh, he has a text file. <laughs> oh, a, I can't wait. Oh, boy. There's a part oh, where Laurie, Cameron Diaz know. doesn't know how to work the coffee machine, like, yep. like in a preposterous way. <laughs> I mean, again, to your robot point. It's not plugged in. And I just, yeah. But I just kept picturing other things she wouldn't be able to do the next mm-hmm. morning. Like, she just screams at the sink because she's thirsty (laughs) like it's just insane montage she's just throwing frying pans at the stove jeez it would be great if that movie ended with her exploding a cottage 
<laughs> what else you got, Ben? Uh, then, this is a long text file. Okay, then I have a um, a note here that says that Wool Blazer is dope. That's the the blazer that he sh- he f- when he shows up drunk he's oh, wearing. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's mean he looks blazer. amazing. His he glasses so are good. good. He's yeah. a snack. All his shirts. He is a snack. He's, he's a, a real snack. 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 Um, yeah, like, he's like a plate of Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I tell you what my brain is Enough. like? All right, hold on. And one last thing. Yes, one last yes, thing. Yes. Uh, I'm making a request for fans if they could do this for me. There's the part where we've mentioned Jet. Are you going to be my girl? Yeah. And she sure. rocks out. Sure. That's like the least like <laughs> the least rocking song yeah, of all time. It, it's so like, you want to overdub something. I want someone right. to dub Mayhem or Cannibal Corpse or like a Black Flag song. Like I want to see oh. a cut of that with some real hardcore or some some fucking grindcore. What, what do, what do or, you got? You know, some speed metal. A, I, I, a, I would love to see that. B, that is one of those sequences that so clearly was written without them having picked a song oh, out totally, yet. Oh, totally. Right. She dances She's not in that no one ever dances in movies where she just flails her fist around and then pretends that the pillow is a guitar. And it's to no beat. It's just like a dance that could be placed over or uh, any this rock is track, true. right? Yes. Um, you making uh, the greatest joke of 2018, of course, uh, Boba Fettuccini, <laughs> <laughs> uh, made me realize the, the only job I want right now. Okay. Like, literally my dream job, and I'm going to, like, on the record, call that this is Go my for goal it. for 2019. I would like to be the person who comes up with the names for all the food items at the uh, Disney Star Wars land. Oh, sure. Mm. All the puns. All the yeah. required puns. Dengar and salad. Anything else? <laughs> He's thinking, folks. <laughs> Pot- potato stew baka? Sure. Boba Fettuccini. Um, <laughs> uh, anything else, Ben? The Obi-Wan Kano Beer Garden. Okay. <laughs> it's more of a location than a... I mean, that's what we call it, then all oh. the items on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Just be right, Budweiser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the only other note is at the end, and I guess we're not there yet. I don't know. No, we're at the yeah, end. We're okay, at the end. that that, p- that party scene is so manic and insane. Yeah. <laughs> like the, I've never seen Jack people Lars with the children. Yeah, they're all over. They're yeah. just He's like it's so them. all over the place. So I love it. What's the Jude Law Cameron Diaz relationship going to be? Who's Doesn't moving matter. where? They, don't they can know. both do their jobs from home. What's the Jack Black Kate Winslet relationship? He says be? he'll go to England. Okay. I mean, everyone in this job, should, in this in this movie, except for Kate Winslet, can do their job from home. Yes. So, I mean, yeah. it's not that much of a crisis. They're all fine. Yeah. I think how it's going to end up is everyone's got to be in England because yeah. Jude's got the kids. So he's sort of got that trump card, like can't move the kid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Jack is, you know, yeah, move to the cottage. I don't like him. He's sort of hobbit size, still fit in there. <laughs> he is hobbit size. He loves He's so hobbit. sweet. Uh, what's your problem, Griffin? Now you I seem just, grumpy. I, again. I mean, I you know, I just this this movie to me, it's uh, uh, it's 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 lacking in conflict. Um, I think the whole Cameron Diaz Jude Law side of things is pretty much lacking in conflict, but I don't find it charming because I feel like they're so hostile and defensive the whole time. And then the Jack Black Kate Winslet stuff I like, but that's essentially a subplot to a subplot because this movie is like. 65% Cameron Diaz, 35% Kate Winslet. Yes. And then Kate Winslet's arc is like 65% Eli Wallach, right. 35% We Jack should Black. mention he goes to his fucking thing and all, everyone's there and it's nice and they all clap she for him. him. He walks up the fucking stairs and then he delivers a four-hour screed on like, yeah, in his day Mussolini was in charge of Italy or whatever it is he talks about. Right, which is, it's not even that they're giving him the Lifetime Achievement Award no, at their award like ceremony. It's a tribute just to him. Right. Yeah, it's just an evening. Which he's been rejecting for right. years. Right. And then from the moment Kate Winslet shows up and finds the letter, it's organized within six days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just an evening. You what? You you don't think people go to these things WGA on like Christmas <laughs> Eve or whatever? WGA West events? Yeah, They're free. Right. This just feels like a movie that was written by aliens. No, it was written by Nancy Myers. But it doesn't. It's a great movie. Grossed. Can how I tell? Much? Go ahead. I have one more story about Please. a viewing of this movie. Please. Which is that the last time I watched this before rewatching this time was in winter of 2016 because I wrote a bright wall dark room piece about this movie. Oh and really? I did defending it um, aggressively, but I watched it with friends around the holidays and. 
we were watching at, at my friend's place and said friend was had just started dating someone who was younger and not like okay. problematic younger, but younger enough that we all sort of like eyebrows up mm-hmm. and said younger person also had a younger roommate who had tagged along. OK, who I had been warned was the worst. So we had to like sit around and like entertain drinks for like 30 minutes before starting the movie. Two minutes before we start the movie, said worst roommate knocks over an entire bottle of wine, red wine. So we have to clean that up. Red, red wine. Um, we sit down to watch. <laughs> you before you reference. Doug is really off right the now. leash. In this oh, stuff. my God. <laughs> yes, he is. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> Go on, Fran. Finish. Um, Sorry. We, walk, walk. we sit down to start the movie. That's enough. Um, <laughs> let me say my piece. Um, <laughs> we sit down to start the movie. We get 45 seconds into Kate Winslet's like, opening monologue. And this guy stands up and he's like, oh. I forgot I hate movies and leaves. <laughs> I forgot I hate movies. The craziest I thing I have told me that story. That's ever a witnessed. Story. And then he got in a pod and flew back to the planet <laughs> Melmac, right? Insane. The only interaction I've had in my whole life with this person. Uh, sounds great. Um, was deeply fascinated by that sentence. Wait, wow. I don't want to do this anymore. I got to go. <laughs> oh, right. Ben just, I mean, we've all been waiting for that. <laughs> ben forgot that he hates podcasts. <laughs> Am I correct in thinking this movie ended up at like 45? No, it did better than that. It made $63 million. Oh, it's so it multiplied okay. The it opening multiplied was pretty fine. Low, the right? opening was only 12. Yeah. Um, Is this in the top half of her more? Well, she's only one? made six movies. No. And it's, so it's four. No. Oh, okay. Right. Because you know. it's complicated. Know. Someone's got to no, give. And uh, what women want, I'll cruise past 100. What women want is 182. Something is 124. Right. Uh, it's complicated. It was 112. Yeah. In turn was 75. So this is her fifth, actually. 66. Yeah. Oh, no, it's her sixth. It made less than the parent trip. Yeah, this is her oh. lowest grossing film. It's her okay. lowest grossing film. Okay. Yeah. It costs a little sort of too much money. an undiscovered classic. <laughs> right. Yeah, real diamond in the rough. Um, it was two hours and six. I'm just 16 waiting for them to release the Snyder cut. Like I feel like everything that doesn't make sense in this movie is because we don't get to see the Snyder. Agree cut. that the movie that the only problem is that it's not four hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, it did do very well overseas, though. It grossed 141 million dollars, so it made 205 million worldwide, which is pretty healthy. Yeah. Uh, it opened on December eighth, two thousand and six, in the number three position. Number one, though, is a movie Ben Hosley loves, starring a, I mean, directed by a former Nancy Myers star. Yeah, well, you once told me you love this movie. I believe it's on the podcast. It's directed by a former. Na- oh, oh, oh! I believe I told you I love this movie. Maybe Apocalypto. Yeah, yeah, great movie. Which Fox? Yeah, Mel Gibson. Yeah, like never that. seen. I don't it's like, like that. He's scary. I don't like how he's like trying to be like. We're going to save these savages from themselves. Yeah, no, no. Uh, problematic. <laughs> Mel Gibson's oh, see, problematic tr- AF. I, I read the ending of that movie very differently. And maybe I'm giving him too much credit because Lord knows he probably has a bad take on everything. But I always thought the end of that movie was like, look at this guy fighting so hard to save his life. And then he makes it back home and it doesn't matter because now his land is going to be colonized. Like it was all for naught. Oh. His yeah. whole life is going to be destroyed anyway. It's a weird fucking movie. I thought it was like a very cynical ending, not a like, hey, let us get in there and clean up this mess kind of ending. I, I, it's the only movie of his I, I like. Oh, I like all his movies. <laughs> it's a very embarrassing opinion of mine. Uh, Braveheart Rules. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge is... Man with No Face? I've never seen that one. Yeah. I think, I'm sure that one's fine. Uh, I think Hacksaw Ridge is dumb. It is pretty dumb. Hacksaw Ridge is the one that's the worst one. Yeah. Passion of the Christ is, is... It's what it is. It's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> it's about that... Uh, have I ever told you... I think I've told this other podcast, like, if there was like a family friend who uh, was from Iraq, was not yeah. uh, Christian, and was so not Christian that he was just kind of not... And he called up and he said, heard about this movie. They really beat the shit out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember, I don't remember if we did this on mic or it was just a thing we talked about, but after, like, the Star Wars episodes, when we were like, how do we replicate this? Is there, like, another franchise we could talk about without context? The only good idea was, what if we did Passion of the Christ but pretended that the Bible didn't exist? So... We were like, how do you come up with an idea like that? And he plays a Jesus. He does play Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes, that's right. Uh, Number two is a film Griffin probably loves. Is a huge hit. It's an animated film. It won the Oscar. 
Happy Feet? Happy Feet. I, I love, love that movie. It. Oh, really? Love I love that Brand movie. I think that movie's very bizarre. It's, it's so very weird. Strange. It's very yeah. scary. I really yeah. like the first 30 minutes. I like it when he's little. Uh-huh. I think that when, when the movie's just him going like, I like to dance. Oh, here I am. It's dancing. like a mumbles, the tap dancing panic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. When he grows up. It's scary. Uh, yeah. Then it's weird. Weird it's movie. George Miller. Movie. Yeah. And I really like, like it. half live action at the end. Very, oh, yeah, when yeah. he's in the, the mu- zoo. The museum. <laughs> yeah. The Penguin Museum, that's right. Yeah, it's um, a very odd film that made an insane amount of money yeah, and won the Oscar. it's four weekends in. It's still number two. I think it yeah. had been number one three weeks in a it row. It beat Casino Royale three weeks in a row. It was like a and weird both thing. Both of them made like the same amount of money. It was yeah. just like always a little bit above it. Yes. Yeah. It's but weird. it's a movie that allows George Miller to make Fury Road. Yep. Casino Royale is number four, as you said. Okay. And number five is um a... Hmm. It's sort of like a. Hmm. How do I describe this movie? How do I describe it, Ben? Like a big kind of an action movie, but like sort of a socially uh, aware. It's not Syriana, is it? No. The lead actors no, doing a, the lead actors doing an accent. That's a lot a, of Oscar nominations. It's, oh. it's not good. Oh, is it Blood Diamond? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Blood Diamond. A movie I've still never seen. I've never seen it. Oh, no. not the worst, but yeah. not good. Not a very big hit. Uh, well, fifty seven did okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, but it got a bunch of Oscar nominations. We once had a I big like five. Fight. Yeah, that's crazy. We once had a very big fight over whether or not that movie had made a hundred million domestic. It cost a hundred million. Is the uh, <laughs> right? Um, yes, but no, it didn't. But you know, I think because of the Oscar noms, I guess it kind of qualifies as a hit. Yeah, and it did well worldwide. And I feel whatever. people use that movie as a joke when they want to make jokes about like serious. Yeah, because it's a lot Oscar of screaming movie. and crying. Right. I guess Hansu is good in that, right? I like he him a does lot. A, I love him as an actor. Yeah. He does a lot of screaming and crying. It's a pretty one-dimensional I'm so role. excited for him and Shazam playing a wizard. I'm so excited for him to return to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm so into that Captain Marvel brings back two of the most disrespected characters in the MCU. What's his character's name again? Uh, Korath, the Korath, Destroyer. Right. I was getting him confused with Malkith. Uh, not Malkith. He's disrespected, too. I'd love him to pop back. Yeah. Here. Dark Elves. Right. Uh, but no, uh, Lee Pace is also in Captain Ronan the Accuser. Oh, I didn't know. Ronan the Accuser. Ronan mm-hmm. the Accuser. He's back. Yeah. That's great for him. I love Ronan the Accuser. I think he's disrespected, as I said. Yeah, I think he rules. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk about it. I later. accuse him of being undervalued within this <laughs> fan uh, You've also got Deja Vu, mm-hmm. the fun Denzel movie. Oh, yeah. With Which, time travel. Deja Vu was weirdly the biggest spec script sale of all time. Bizarre. And then the movie kind of didn't make much of an impact. But that script got sold for like $10 million. Cool. Uh, unaccompanied <laughs> Minors, the Paul Feig movie. That like doesn't exist, is based really on a This exist. American Life segment. Yeah, weird. Is there just in an airport? It's like the terminal, but just for one night? It's kid, <laughs> like, kid terminal? It, right. Right. It's kids who are unaccompanied minors flying alone. And the flights get canceled because of a snowstorm and they're all stuck Christmas night. Yeah. Mm. Which is like kind of like a funny, like little slice of life, uh, you know, this American life segment about a bunch of kids who had to spend Christmas together as like weird latchkey children in an airport. And uh, everybody hates Chris, isn't it? I know. And, that's uh, the movie he wanted to make. And then Warner Brothers turned it into like a hijinks movie where they're sure. trying to like prank the security guard sure. who's Rob Wilmer, Riggle, Wilmer Valderrama, oh, Wilmer yeah. Valderrama. Louis Black. It's got a weird cast. Hmm. Uh, the fat kid from um, uh, Bad Santa was in it. Sure. Everybody hates Chris. It was like all kids who had kids been, been like shit. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, everybody hates Chris. It's great. Not shit. But yeah. Uh, Nativity Story. Deck the Halls. Which one's that? Deck the Halls is Denny DeVito and <laughs> Matthew Broderick <laughs> are dueling over like better decorating. Christmas decorations. Yes. Yeah. Right. Whoa. Jesus. And their wives in that are Kristen Davis. I think is Matthew Broderick's wife. And then Danny DeVito's wife is someone like that's like a sight gag, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> like Iman or like. <laughs> <laughs> Grace Sigourney Jones. Weaver. Right. Someone tall. To think- You're just trying to think of tall yes, people. Yes, that's the joke I'm looking for. Uh, it looks like we've got uh, Kristen Chenoweth. Oh, is, is DeVito's wife. Yeah. Uh, who's very short. True. <laughs> just a different kind of sight gag. <laughs> right. They're both short. Yeah. Still taller than him, I would imagine. Uh, Santa Claus 3. Oh, uh, the uh, it's the escape clause. Correct. No, yes, Correct. yes, with yes. Uh, Martin Short as Jack Frost. Marty, yeah, yeah, that's it. Absolute masterpiece, shorter than the movie. Our episode, thank Ads God. Ads might buff it out though. You never know. 
do you want to make like your sort of final like stand for the movie, Frank? Because I know we've been disrespecting it a lot and a lot of people love it and we'll probably get a lot of hate mail for this episode. Yeah, I do feel routinely bullied um, having returned to the podcast after so long. Um, no, I just I think uh, I have such fond memories of this movie. I think it is ultimately very kind. Mm -hmm. despite how deranged it is. I think a lot of like deranged movies are that I like are also sort of maybe a little mean spirited. Sure. And in this one, it is refreshing just to see people treat each other thoughtfully after sort of the big opening blow. And I Mm -hmm. hate Jasper and Jude law is daddy. He is daddy. And that's true. And we can't argue with that. I think this is just one of those sort of nostalgia ones for me where I saw it at an impressionable age and I'm always going to, defend it and I, there's so many of those movies i actually really don't like and this for me has just been kind of a big sticking point it is also like kind of a movie that was designed to be shown on tv yeah over four hours with right. commercial breaks <laughs> right this is like a tbs like lava up you know yeah i think jack black is normal in it i think kate winslet is normal in it yeah i think jude is normal in it. i think cameron is normal in it Zero. it's extremely normal mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh no, I just uh, yeah, I'm very I'm very very fond of it. It's not my favorite mm-hmm. Nancy. Definitely not mine. What's your favorite Nancy? Something's got to go. Correct. It's so I mean, good. Not to spoil by I only just but... saw it for the first time sort of this year. Outrageous. I well, I was too young for it when it came out. I'm still outraged. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> David, I just respect that my parents did not take me to that movie mm-hmm. when it could have really damaged me. Yeah, I mean you see a naked lady in that picture. Outrageous. David, to be fair in that France that what? could have fucked her up. That could have really messed me up and made me like ladies, you yeah, know? That, what a nightmare that would have been. Yeah, right. <laughs> what a problem. If Fran liked having romantic <laughs> relationships with women? I mean, uh, our world would be so different. The butterfly effect of that, I can't even consider. Yeah. It just wouldn't make sense. David, mm-hmm. in Fran's defense, uh-huh. something had to give. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe. Thanks to Andrew Gudo for our social media. Thanks to Lee Montgomery for our theme song. Joe Bone and Pat Reynolds for our artwork. Go to blankies.rat.com for some real nerdy shit. Check out our merch on TeePublic. And as always, skip it up. Up. Rub-a-doop-boop.